No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, uh, with my with the help of my friend Blair White here, I have arranged for a conversation, a meeting of the minds, something that realistically is way outside of my realm of expertise. But we are bringing together a lot of uh, different members of the trans community today to sort of sort out some some differences and come to some conclusions, perhaps. So, Blair, maybe you can start and uh, give us a little bit of an introduction to who you are and what you're repping. Yeah, so I'm a YouTuber. I've been doing YouTube for about six or seven years now. I have a podcast called The Blair White Project, um, political commentator, uh, sort of like the black sheep of the trans community in the sense that I am politically on the right, which is, I guess, a bit different. So um, what percentage of the, of the trans community are we saying is on the right? Um, is it a 90-10 split? Think, uh, Probably nine to ten. I, I don't think people are honest, to be honest with you. I no, think more I are than want to admit it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, probably more than you would think, but um, it is what it is. Okay, excellent. And so, uh, Buck? Yeah, I'm Buck Angel, and I'm a transsexual man, and I transitioned 30 years ago to live as a man. I um, got started in the pornography business uh, 21 years ago. I created the genre of trans male pornography, I'm a 2007 AVN award winning, the first trans man to win that award. Uh, now I don't do porn so much as I create products for the community and I'm very outspoken about more on a political side around the trans community. And so I challenge a lot of the things that are coming out of the transgender community that I disagree with. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, would you you'd identify as conservative or, or liberal? Oh no, I'm, I would say I'm more probably a liberal but cons with conservative uh, with conser conservative values, I think. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's go over to this side. Actually, I'm gonna start in the middle. My friend Gracie, okay. introduce yourself. Hi, <laughs> I am Gracie Jane, uh, and I am a porn star. Okay. And we just talked earlier today. We did, she was yeah. on Sledge Lords earlier today, which will be available soon. Uh-huh. Right, and, and you transitioned when? Seven or eight years ago. Okay, and you're coming into this with a lot of knowledge of where Blair is at on such issues, or or where would you say that you kind of fall politically? Okay, wait, wait. The, um, I would say probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm not ultra political. I was raised by liberals. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I would probably say liberal. Okay. Yeah. Next. Hi, I'm, I'm Valeria Atreides. Um, I'm also a porn star and a DJ. Uh, Politically, I guess I would be left. I um, don't really agree with the term liberal for myself. Um, so I would say I'm left-leaning. I critique both sides equally, but I would align myself with the left. Yeah. Okay, and finally? Hi, I'm Elena. Not I'm a porn star. Not a porn star. I'm a YouTuber like Blair as well. I've um, been YouTube for like... How many years now? Like around the same time as you have, actually. You first, I think, because I remember seeing you before I even started. Like okay, then maybe like a decade ago then. Yeah. Like 15 years ago then maybe. Um, have my own podcast as well, Elena Romberg back, and it's super raunchy. And yeah, I'm pretty much like same thing as Blair, to be honest. Same thing. I'm not as political as Blair. She's more educated in certain topics than I am. But yeah, I'm just same thing as her, as far as like industry-wise. Not a porn star, but YouTuber. Okay. Got it. So, all right, I'm just going to start with this right here. Buck, it says tranny on your hat. And this is a word that I thought was forbidden language at this point in modern history. W what are you representing there? And what are your thoughts on mm -hmm. that word and the weight that it may carry? Great. Thanks, Thanks for <clears throat> excuse me asking that. Um, for me, tranny represents a word that has been used against us in a way that's sort of a derogatory statement. So, in a sense, I reclaim that word. I, I feel like if you don't reclaim things, people use them against you. And for me, tranny is an important word to reclaim because then you cannot use it against me. So I'm, I'm just owning my, my, my stuff and saying I'm a tranny. If so other people in the trans community don't want to use it, they're more than welcome not to. But what I disagree with is for other people, specifically in the transgender community, telling me that I cannot use this word or that nobody else can use this word. That's not true. I wouldn't have a problem if you called me a tranny at all. These people might have a problem with it and they can confront you with it, but I personally wouldn't. Who would be angry with me if I used that word in casual conversation? Like who, who would you guys take me, that I, as offensive? Gen generally, I wouldn't care because I know where you're coming from. It's intention. It's, like it's intention. It's like yeah. if someone's like, "Oh, you're a fucking tranny." It's like, okay, I don't know you like that, yeah. but like, 
we're cool. So like if you said it, I know you wouldn't be doing it like I'm trying to break you down or some shit. But if we didn't already have that level of familiarity, generally it's an offensive term. It's intention, right? With anything. Right. Anything that you use, you could have an intention of good or bad. All my friends say tranny. The N word where if you're in the in the community, it's more okay to use. And then outside of that, perhaps it's case by case. Maybe you're okay with your friends who are not trans saying tranny, but maybe I don't believe yeah, that. Yeah, it depends on the That's person. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, you, you're you sitting here saying that you know it has negative connotations, but if you said it, I would be like, dude, because you know that. Right. And you made it clear. Yeah. Just to speak on behalf of, like, I, a lot of the cis het community out there, I think that there is a degree of confusion from normal people out there because it does kind of seem like it's just adding the Y at the end of a word. And, you know, I feel like that's kind of something that we do as people who speak English. Like if somebody's name is Ben, they're Benny, you know, if it's Dan, it's Danny. It's like, is, is, do you think that people are a little oversensitive about that? Cause Buck, you seem like you have like a much more expansive view of it. Well, again, you know, I'm going to have a different experience than the ladies here. You know, I'm a trans man. And so I live my life as a male. I come to things in a masculine space and I don't have to deal with things I think. I deal with different types of sort of biases or, or people being rude or disrespectful to me in a different way. So tranny does come from the pornography space. I right. mean, we used to call it mm-hmm. tranny porn for many, many, many years, shemale porn, all of those things. Yeah. Then all of a sudden that became a derogatory. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're making porn. We're not, we're not debating the president of the United States. So for me, it, it, it takes away from our history, especially in the pornography business. And I, I find history to be very important. And when you start to lose the history of where our community comes from, I lived on the streets for many years around a lot of transsexual women who love to call themselves trannies. So I know, you know, there, there's a different, I'm going to have a different lived experience than them. Again, I transitioned 30 years ago. Big difference in what's going on today. And not to continue to go back to this, but with the N-word, the N-word is a bastardization of the Spanish way to say black, which mm. is negro. Right. And white people um, from English-speaking countries or wherever, they bastardize that to nigger. Um, so it's the same with tranny where it's uh i know you're saying that it's us adding ny to something or y to something as a joke but the word nigger is also the same thing fair enough um i don't like shemale tranny I'm, I, all right well that one's shemale like- transvestite <laughs> no none of that that's old school Keep the- See, well, that feels like is shady. Different. I grew up saying that, that and thinking that was standard. Me. Yeah. But transvestite being... isn't trans. Excuse, excuse me. Cross dresser, that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. But if we're being real, Tranny, anyone who really yeah, has hate in their heart oh, for okay. like a trans person, their go to is probably going to be faggot. It's or not going to be tranny. They're yeah. not seeing you as even trans or just, they just find that out and then they go straight to that. Then it's just a faggot. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's context. But overall, it's just words, you know? It's just words. Right. There's bigger issues. Definitely. Yeah. From one bag of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> See, but this is my my problem with her is that she's always trying to dunk on me by inferring that I'm gay, and I'm like, That's, if you are truly in favor dunk of on you, though, <laughs> I never said it was a dunk on you. I just think it's true. But I think that's kind of what you're going for, and I'm just saying that <laughs> it, it's not what I'm if, going for. It's, it's I think that you inferring it is says everything. <laughs> okay, but I'm just saying, like, if you really are in favor oh, of you, gay like, rights. I love Ca- gay. telling someone that they're gay, which I see because I see people do this on Twitter, where people on the left are constantly trying to infer that gay. some Republican politician is gay as a way of dunking on them, and I'm just kind of like, well, uh, yeah, this, this makes no you. sense I'm, to me. I'm, I'm, I've been in a committed relationship with a woman for <laughs> six years. I, wife? Like, I have no documented you, history in that regard. I don't think. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying. Well, you obviously don't know because you're sitting here so glad it. I'm just trying to catch you here because I think that you you keep trying to do this weird thing that that social justice warriors do, I'm where they to make you gay. They call people gay as a way of dissing them, and I'm like, that's literally like the whole thing you're supposed to be against, right? And then no. trap you into defending that you're not gay, which never looks good. Yeah, which I just did. I'm over here. I'm in a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It worked. Uh, you got it. <laughs> it did work. <laughs> For sure. Fruit, maybe, but I'll take it. Like, right. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's just dump right into the deep end here. Jeez. I think one of the, the biggest arguments that everybody 
has been having in terms of um, you know the the trans issue is just the sports issue and i think that this is something that blair probably falls on a different side of the spectrum than some of these other ladies blair you want to give us your uh hypothesis of how uh we should approach women in sports sure i mean buck too buck was a professional athlete as a woman so he has an interesting perspective but for me it's kind of just like a it's there's not so much gray areas people like to pretend so there's this narrative that like once someone goes on hormones they're automatically on a level playing field with women in terms of trans women being in women's sports and it's just not that you know especially a lot of these athletes like the leah thomases that we're seeing like they start transitioning at like 30 you know they have like a foot of height on the female athletes it's like very obvious there's an issue they're winning very easily and so it's kind of like just believing your eyes and ears and seeing what's happening so it's like i'm fully against trans women and women's sports if you transition as an adult i think that there's nuances in terms of like I don't agree with children transitioning. We can get to that. But if you started like blockers at 12 and you never even went through male puberty, what's really the big issue? But if you're starting halfway through life and then all of a sudden you want to go wrestle women or, you know, there's like power lifters and shit, it's like, okay. Okay, but hear me out. Claire, is it? Blair. Blair, Blair, sorry. Um, What about like guys who take steroids and do the sport? Yeah, but that's that's not within the bounds. Yeah, but I mean, people do it. But But they they test so crazy in every form of professional sports. Yeah, Yeah, I've heard. Well, can I say something as a biological female for sure who did participate in sports as a female? And I, I ran, I'm 60 years old, so I ran in the 70s and 80s when there was the USSR, where, as you know, those Damn. women were buffed out, basically dudes. They had mustaches, and we would get our asses kicked by them. So it's on some level, I understand that it will not work. There are trans women who transition as an adult already have an advantage over a biological woman. That is an mm. actual fact. You cannot argue that. You can try to argue it, but it's not real. So there's a lot of advantages there. So those advantages get taken. And as you can literally use Leah Thomas as an example. She blew every woman away. Easily. And she changed the game. There will be never will there be a biological woman who could ever create that time ever again. How is that a fair and level pay? Does anybody understand the word sportsmanship? That's why we have sportsmanship. That's why we have male and female sports for that particular reason. It's not transphobic to have this conversation. It is actually factual. And I really don't understand why people are getting so butthurt over it. And what about this legislation starting to affect um, women, like cis women sports where uh, particularly black women are starting to be tested and barred from from sports because of um, unknown... They have been testing issue. women from literally the 60s and 70s for steroid usage. Now, that being said, that has nothing to do with the trans debate. That's moving over here to going to the right. We need to stay specifically on trans women competing against biological women. But that legislation women. starts this, uh, this testing of, other, of, people, of people for like, right. other reasons and starts been doing scrutinizing that people for um, things that they can't control. But they've been doing that already. They've been testing women already for steroids. This isn't. No, she's new. talking about she's talking about like intersex people. She's talking about like testing. Well, them intersex for... people are a very, very small percentage of, and they're not trans. They're intersex. They're no, complete... but they exist but in the world. And they play in sports cis too. But it's a sports, very small a lot percentage. Of it, yeah. it attracts very a lot small. of intersex women because intersex women would potentially be Have having. Are you speaking of one? Are you speaking of one particular athlete? No, I'm speaking about several. Well, ca- I can speak of one particular athlete, Caster Simon. And she is an intersex person. And she did get tested. But does she, she have an unfair advantage? Does she have an That's exactly the question. Does well, she I'm have asking an, you. What do you how mean? do I know? I don't know. They're testing her and still letting her run. So as far as I'm concerned, if she is biologically considered a female, she's more than welcome to run in the female space. But, a, bi- but a transgender woman is a biological male. Let's, let's not beat around the bush here. I think we have to talk about averages because we can all, like the other night I was at a party and uh, one of my friends is now dating this like female, biologically female power lifter. And she could kick my ass any day of the week. Like she was huge and very athletic and whatever. But it's like... Yeah, there's averages and then there's exceptions to the rules, but you have to go by the general population when you're including people in certain sects of sports. And that's why sports were initially divided in the first place, because it simply isn't unfair and isn't fair. Like that was something we've had figured out for a very, very long time. And I think it boils down to society is struggling. I think we can all agree with like the integration of trans people, particularly Mm -hmm. trans women into life. So when it comes to life, what's part of life? Sports, education, uh, the workplace, housing 
kind of got the housing worked on. The sports are difficult because there are differences between the sexes. That's just an objective truth. Um, so yeah, we can point to like specific intersex athletes and maybe an overreaction in legislation that affects people in ways that aren't appropriate or go overboard with other people. But I think we should keep it on just the trans because yeah, that might be unfair legislation to intersex people or to biological women. That doesn't change the reality of trans women in women's sports. I think it's like a very specific thing. I'm sp I spoke about that because it starts bleeding out. No, so I know it bleeds out. And I know that the way the world works, you know, politics, especially it's a pendulum, right? It's like yeah. we go to left and then we go to right. And then we just always are trying to find like just that center, or at least most of us are that are rational. Are you athletic? People. Uh, no, no, Me no. Neither. I was never athletic. Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of agree with what Blair says about like trans people in like women's sports. I feel like it depends like when did the transition. I kind I think, of yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. If you never went through male puberty, even though, as I said, we'll get to that. I don't agree with children necessarily transitioning. That's a very different case than Leah Thomas who goes her whole life developing male, gets to 6'3", mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden is like, I want to swim against women. A sport that's very, like, every inch of your body is used in swimming, I would assume. Right, like, I feel like there's a thing with trans people in general where they hate the idea of having to sort of prove how male or female they are. And when we talk about the sports conversation, it's like it immediately becomes everybody kind of trying to prove that certain athletes might be eligible as a man or a woman, like with the Leah Thomas thing. It kind of feels like nobody here is really dying to defend uh, their right to compete as a woman, even though some people might be more in favor of it than others. You know, people have a natural aversion to seeing unfairness. It's like if you see like a fight video or something on the street and you see even like two dudes fighting, one of them just much larger and has and is clearly going overboard on a smaller dude, you have a natural like that's not fair. So when people watch Leah Thomas swimming miles ahead of these women and then you see the women crying next to the stage because they would have had first place and gotten the scholarship or whatever it's mm -hmm. kind of like people naturally don't like that you know so i think that unfortunately a lot of trans activists try to push us into a space we don't necessarily need to be in and it creates more hatred and backlash towards us it's like mm -hmm. we don't need to always see the leah thomases and, and need to just defend them blindly i don't think we have to defend every instance of bad behavior in the trans community i think it actually does better for us to be like actually we can call that out and we can still affirm our own dignity we can still affirm our own rights we can still say we're still people and in these other areas it's cool but like we don't need trans women in women's sports we just don't if they went through the military i wish i just don't care about sports i wish i, I mean i, don't either. I wish i did i'm sorry i don't the other thing is like all the athletes, uh -huh. you know, women's sports historically don't get a lot of viewers. They don't get a lot of money, support or whatever. So it's, it also makes a conversation of everyone's pretending to care about women's sports. Uh, yeah. That's just real. I mean, no why doesn't everybody it. pay more attention to women's sports? Okay. They play sports too. I mean, that's a conversation too. So. Mm -hmm. Well, these women work hard to get to that space. Exactly. That's just real. The NCAA. The that experience. is a huge thing to make it into the NCAA and to make that. And then for a trans woman to come in, <laughs> yeah. shame on her. You know, I, it's, it, it, she shouldn't, she should have turned shame around and gave that her. shame on her. For I'd say shame on her. That is, I just feel like the shame on her. That's so Shame on it. her. Actually, shame on her. Even if sports, you're within the rules, it is not though, just sports. Just that, sports. That, that, that's the problem right there. Well, I'm not. It's athlete. just sports. This is a it's person who dedicated sports. their entire life to it. Yeah. That's you know? right. It okay. is not you're just right, sports. Right, this right. is a career move. This is a way. And then for some woman, a trans woman, to come in and say, I get to do this, yeah. I get the ability to do this, basically, go screw yourself, because that's really what she did. It's not fair. And that, that's the whole premise of sports. There's fair sportsmanship. And if she would have been fair about it, she would have turned around and given her trophy to the second place woman and said, here you go. And that would have been a, a beautiful guarantee moment. it would have been a different space. That would have been an amazing moment and would have yes. actually shed a positive light that's on the right. trans community. Like, that's right. You it should become great. an athlete and do that. That would be so I mean, that's beautiful. Just, that's not in the cards for me. But I would love to it, see it, that. it is what it is. That would be a beautiful moment. She's a political right. commentator. Yeah. It's its own sport, I'm right? I'm not about to go swimming. But regardless, <laughs> it's I like, I now. think, I you know, it. again, it just comes down to societies having a really hard time blending trans women yeah. and women. And yeah. my opinion is you don't necessarily need to blend them in every area. Not every lane is for you. I'm I full, agree with that. Like I agree there's with that a certain yeah. lane for trans women. And I think we actually degrade ourselves when we're like, By no, to we have to be in the women's locker rooms, cock out and all. It's um, like, get yeah. the fuck out of here. We have to be in women's I mean, rooms. I'm not going into a men's locker room. However, but I there's do a, agree. Yeah, yeah. It's like not every lane is for you. It doesn't have to be. But I think a lot of the trans activists think that if trans women aren't included in every women women's lane, that it's somehow oppression or, or bad for us and i, don't I just think don't is. think that that's always true though i feel like i think that it's just a 
every trans woman, I mean, I've talked with like liberal and conservative trans women who both go through There's like others. Yeah, all types of trans oh, women. Caitlin. <laughs> There's all types of trans women, right? Why don't we get Caitlin? Not just she walks in. That would be a great idea. <laughs> self the self hatred, you know, like wanting to be cis thing, like it's sad for me to see because I'm proud of being trans, you know, like I'm, yeah, you know, liberal, conservative, whatever. Yeah, I think it's, I think we can all say here that we're proud of who we are, you know. But not every trans person's on that like pace in their journey, you know. Right. So. But they call the ones like they'll call Buck and I self hating for having the opinions we have. But it's like who's really self hating? The ones that have to be in the women's locker room, otherwise they're crying themselves to sleep because they don't feel like they're really women. Or the trans people who are like, I'm cool with being trans. I don't need to be in every room in every space. You know. But what what is the answer to the bathroom conversation? Because well, Blair, I definitely don't want you walking into the men's room. It would be really awkward. Well, I don't want to yeah. see what the reaction on people's faces are going to be. You're well, just presenting mean, yeah. way too feminine, well, and also, really bathrooms. for you guys as well. It's just it would be very very bad for society. I think. You don't want to be in the men's room. Uh huh. You don't want to be in the men's room. That's a separate issue. <laughs> Well, bathrooms also, I think people sometimes get really dramatic about the bathrooms, and this is where I punch right a little bit, because I'm like, no one's seeing anyone's genitals in the bathroom, unless there's really a sexual predator, for which that's a whole different scenario. Right. Locker rooms are different. If you're walking around, like in We Spa here in LA, there was a yeah. huge controversy. There was just a trans woman who actually was just a man um, with a dick out, and women were complaining, and it's like, yeah, they have every right to complain. No one wants mm -hmm. to go see a dick in a bathroom. I don't want to see a dick in a bathroom. So it's like, or locker room, that is. Right. Um, so bathrooms are one thing, but it's weird because, you know, bathrooms were never an issue. Like when I first started transitioning, which was like seven, eight years ago, um, I would use the bathroom even at my early stages with no issues and no one cared. And now I feel like cis women are getting clocked. So now it's like people are looking at cis women and being like, I don't know, she looks a little too, she shouldn't be here. I've seen videos of like mm. people putting phones in like a biological woman's face being like, this is a woman's bathroom, you can't come in here. So people are just oh. too like in it it's just too much. But do you, I mean, because you are on the right, and we all know that the right just kind of uses these trans issues to have something to talk about, right? Oh, yeah, but both <laughs> sides do, though. That's it's money, it's a huge true. money maker okay. on both sides, you know? And that's the one thing that I've really, as someone who, I often say I get it from both ends every day. I don't even do OnlyFans, because I wake up and I have fucking right-wingers tweeting me, left-wingers tweeting me, so I know what it's like on both sides. And the reality is there's a huge industry on the left to keeping trans people oppressed, really. I mean... There was a huge, like all of these organizations, HRC, um, what are all the big ones like that are like the oh, activist DLD? ACLU. Yeah, it's uh, like, you know, they all raised billions of dollars off mm -hmm. getting gay marriage legalized. What were they gonna do? Pack it up and go home after yeah. gay marriage was legalized? They had to move on to the next issue. And now you have 12 year olds getting their breasts removed and 16 year olds getting their dicks cut off. Blair, don't you think that p picking out like those outlier people, those weirdos <laughs> who use fucking the trans thing to be weirdos? Don't you think by like cherry picking those situations that you can sometimes like draw a negative association to the trans community in general? By well, let's that? define cherry picking because that's a huge um, thing that my detractors say, which is like I'm picking out these cases. Is it cherry picking if it's on the front page of CNN? Well, I, I just want to say, you, you know, I think that the issues, I, I understand people, people are creepy, right? Like people do weird shit, but those aren't. Trans people. So when you talk Some about- Some of them are. But they well, say they're trans. I think, I think the th thing when is- When you're talking in the grand scheme of things, like most of the people who are doing creepy, abusive things are not trans. Women. But they say well, they're of trans. Of course, but I think about what shines a worse light on the community. In that entire... shines a horrible light on the community. Right, but I but mean, hear people me think out. we're monsters. You have to understand. A lot of people. Think I get that, but like, here's he why people even think is that. sitting here talking about. Oh, she made me uncomfortable at ABN because she said. I was just kidding. I, well, I know, <laughs> but my point is, like. So many, so much of the world sees us as these like creepy people. Like, why add to that, girl? Like, wh why? why I don't not? think I add to it at all. Because first of all, I'm not doing the shit. Second of all, if it's on the front well, page, well, no, of, I don't think you're doing it. If I'm it's on the front page of Fox News, CNN, it. and MSNBC, I'm not okay. cherry picking. That's national news. And second of all, right. I think what shines a well, worse light on the community and mm -hmm. trans people in general is when an entire community is silent. When there's mm -hmm. a huge headline story about this shit and no one says anything. The okay. fact that the entire community had nothing to say about the We Spa shit when every well, other little I thing think we the pick community up, gets sick of getting of getting painted like weirdos and creeps like because we're not right that. and they think it's more effective to fight against it and make a clear mm -hmm. line that you're against it rather than silent like yeah i just think it feeds a lot of negative opinions and you don't, you don't realize that but it does, it does. i disagree i, yeah, I, I totally get disagree. comments and messages on a minute-to-minute -minute basis from people saying i live in 
name a deep red state, Oklahoma, Arkansas, wherever. <laughs> I have no never doubt a, in that, girl. Right, but I'm never met a, but, but, but hear me out. It's like I get messages on a minute-to-minute -minute basis, people who discovered my channel, their only perception of trans people in the media are these people you're talking about. Okay. So that's all they can go off of. They don't meet trans people at whatever the fuck they do in Oklahoma, go to Walmart, whatever. So they see a trans person who's actually speaking against it when the rest of the community, it looks like everyone's complicit. I don't agree that everyone's complicit. I think most trans people are just trying to get by. But when everyone's quiet about it, like, for example, mm -hmm. when Gigi Gorgeous and Nikita Dragon are making, like, huge, riled up stories about, like, every little thing that happens in the community that offends them, but they don't want to talk about other shit that's bigger when they could just easily say it, it makes it look worse, in my opinion. Now, I'm not ultra familiar with your content at all, but I want to know, like, do you ever do like uplifting content about like other trans women? Like, do you ever all the time. I've, I've told I'm I genuinely do not know. So okay. Well, the answer is all the time. I've okay. told my entire story, my transition from start to start. I'm talking about other trans, trans women. Other yeah. Trans I've done stories. videos where at the end of these videos where I'm talking about these trans predators or whatever, or people pr pretending to be trans, where I'm highlighting an example of a success story that's a trans person. I do all the time. Yeah. I collab with Buck. Like I make it very clear. Wouldn't you argue that it would probably be equally important to tell positive stories about our community rather than just only I just told you about, I do though yeah no I'm saying you know not the end you. of your video about the creeps <laughs> okay well also but I do I YouTube know, just, and there's no a lot of trans people out here and, and we do a lot of amazing shit and I just think that highlighting Agreed. some of that could be way more beneficial to the community I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say that information's bad but I just think that sometimes you know agreed but also I do YouTube and we all know Elena can back me up here no one's clicking a video trans woman sunshine and rainbows it's like i'm talking about important shit in the community like if if like if adam i'm sure the title of this video is going to be something contentious like a trans debate or whatever if it's just like you know five trans people sitting and getting along as the title no one's gonna fucking click it yeah they want controversy no one's fucking of course clicking, right? yeah i mean i get that i guess i just but Blair isn't making you. stuff up. She's actually taking stuff I, from I our community. Well, I'm just telling you, she takes stuff from our community and she gives her perspective as a trans woman, which right. is very important because we want I'm people to mine see. As well. I'm right, right. But what, what, so. what you're talking about her channel, it's very important that there are different voices in the community, not just one way of thinking. There isn't just one way of thinking in this community. Yet I people know. out there think there's one way of thinking or one way of being. Why is it that I only get to be asked to speak on conservative shows? Why do you know, I speak on every conservative show out there, but not one single liberal, and I'm a liberal, show will have me on because I have a different opinion than the uh, voices that get airplay out there. So there's a huge diversity in our community. There are people who don't like children transitioning, including myself. And when we speak out, the community comes after us as if what we're saying is, I get called transphobic. Can you imagine? I'm 30 <laughs> the plus pioneer years transition. Of the community over here. I get called transphobic. That is disgusting. That's where our community is at right now. This the is division. one of our elders. You can't do that. To I, division. Know. I, know. I, I know. There's a division. Much respect to you. Well, no, I respect you too. That's yeah, the whole point. That's why these conversations are important. Not there is really. not one way of thinking in our community. There are many ways, of, but many people are too scared to speak out. I'm not. She isn't. So that's why it looks like we're sort of these lone wolves in this. There are many people in our community who believe what we say and want us to say it. They're, they're too scared to say it because they'll lose their job. They'll lose their place in where it is. They'll get ostracized from the community, all kinds of stuff. So our community isn't so loving and beautiful as you're trying to portray there. And let's be real. We're supposed to all have the same opinion about Leah Thomas. Right. Leah Thomas is supposed to I just really wreck all these competitions and all the ha whole trans community is supposed to be like, that's right. Love it. Like, no, that's come right. on. It's like, there that's with any community. Let's just use the well, black yeah, community. It, there's going to be diversity in the black community. I'm sure there's some people who think this way. Some people think that way. And that that's the way it should be. There's not just one way of thinking in, of in any community. And so that's why voices need to be heard on all levels of the conversation. And I don't think it takes away anyone's dignity sitting here to, that's right. To say that. I mean, no, we're all, no. it's like, that's right. I respect your opinion 100%. I respect yours too. We're all entitled to, to 100%. The way we feel. It's important. We're here to say how we feel, you know? Because what's our ultimate goal? We for the world to accept us question. and let us live our lives. I, yeah. I've lived 30 years this way. I have an right. amazing life. Right. I, I travel the whole world. People aren't mean to me. I don't get bashed. <laughs> and, well, there's a thing that happens where you have an account like Libs of TikTok that just sort of like highlights maybe some of the worst things or yes. at least the most extreme things that are going on within the LGBTQ community and, you know, clearly has a, a an objective to, Bias. you know, prevent or presented as if these people are really trying to groom your kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, there, I do think that there is a role for people to step in and provide some kind of editorial about that because so many people who follow that account clearly just watch those videos and think that this is the average trans person. Right. And I don't think that that's the case, but then it's also, it's seen as kind of ugly for trans yeah. people to be doing this right. infighting thing about what it is or how trans people should behave, mm -hmm. especially given that it is a community that is literally entirely composed of people who clearly had to make uh, you know decisions in their life to go against the grain in a very serious way so it's it's like the trans community really doesn't want to agree on much or, or or be forced to agree on anything really right well i don't know how to in the name of just keeping it cool with everyone in the community mm -hmm. like compromise my belief that a 12 year old shouldn't have their breasts cut off because they like boy things where has that been all happened the, in america though Oh my all the all the time. Twelve the time. is the earliest age you can get a double mastectomy in the U.S. It happens all the time. I just yeah. went with uh, one of my best friends back to the place that I got my plastic surgery at to help her with healing and take care of her. She's an adult, um, and uh, the receptionist said that they just passed a law in Texas like last month, like raising the age from twelve to eighteen with double mastectomies. So for years they were doing that, and that's mm -hmm. just Texas. In California, it's a sanctuary state for trans kids. It was surgery specifically, you can get double mastectomy at 12, go on blockers as early, early as 11, mm -hmm. and sex changes for males, so male to female, you can have it as early as 16, getting bottom surgery and everything, mm -hmm. which, you know, I don't know how to compromise my, not even belief, like I consider objective knowledge that a child cannot consent to that, um, for the sake of finding peace and harmony within the trans community, when the rest of the world is looking at us like, why are you all okay with that? But I think that? lumping in something... Uh, permanent like surgery with something impermanent like um, puberty blockers is a little bit disingenuous because you mm. can go back onto your puberty if you decide at whatever age. Not that you fully. Don't want to um, there's actually right now a bunch of studies coming out saying that it was complete lie that they were uh, re reverse reversible and safe. Uh, brain swelling is a huge symptom that they're pulling out now. Um, Australia, the UK, Sweden. Who else? Finland, Finland, Norway. All of those are the places that had these puberty blockers and surgeries right. prescribed first. America looked to them as the pioneers. Like, look at these very progressive European mm -hmm. countries that are doing this. All of them have reversed those guidelines. All of them have reversed their guidelines, even on puberty blockers. So I mm -hmm. think that there's a narrative that puberty blockers are safe, reversible, effective. But uh, I'm assuming you, that's getting pushed down, I guess. Yeah, I, but I then if you really think about it, it's like how reversible can blocking your puberty really be? Even if maybe you go off of it and some of it can come back. I mean, I, I feel like just logically, it's like if you stunt someone's growth. Okay, that was advocate use. though. Then you have all these other kids, right, who maybe they don't know about hormones or they're, they don't have access to them or whatever. And there's like people who commit suicide and stuff, okay? Those kids, trans kids who commit suicide. It happens, okay? So my question is, What's the solution? Like, if if you you don't want any kind of transitioning for kids, which is it's I see your point on, and there's parts of your point that I agree with. So what what do you do about all these kids who are like you? Like, do you tell them no, you don't know who you are until you're 18? Like, I'm just what like what is your proposed solution? Um, do you have kids, either of you? I do. Okay, yeah, I have a ten year old. So mm -hmm. what would you say? Your mm -hmm. your ten year old tells you you're they're yep. trans. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what? What do you tell them? Do you tell them, no, you're not? Until well, no, I send them to mental age? health care. So for me, the problem that we are missing. I don't know. I just want to know. The problem that's happening right now is that we have eliminated mental health care. We now have what's called affirmation therapy. So basically, yeah. that's not even therapy. That's like a child goes in and says, I'm trans, which that's ridiculous. No child knows they're trans. That's a word that just came into play from TikTok well, and all of these. people do know when they're kids. Dysphoria. They have a dysphoria, which is not necessarily trans. They have maybe some body stuff going on, you some mental. Kid, right? I knew when I was mental. five. Yeah, well, that's you. Yeah. But, but that's you. And again, I knew that I felt like a boy, but I didn't know that I was trans. That's a whole different well, conversation. Different generations. Now trans. But that's what I'm saying. They're humans giving are these humans, words. Though, and a child's capacity is still a child's capacity. So yeah, if my think, child decided they were trans, they if, are. I think that they're absolutely trans people. And here's where, and if we're not allowing, where if we're, where is where would you allow children or where would you allow people to start hormones? Eighteen, but then sixteen-year-old cis age. girls That's are allowed can... to irreversibly change their body with Who? Um, cis girls that are sixteen are allowed to irreversibly change their bodies with different forms of birth control, but then. 
Well, so I don't. Can, I also, they can get plastic surgery I actually surgery don't too. really agree with that either. No, yeah, that's right. Control. Yeah, that's right. But like, what if that child has cysts or has other things that? Well, that's a medical condition. That's not cosmetic surgery. Number one. Number two. Do you know a thing called detransitioners? Yeah, of course I okay, do. Okay, well, how come detransitioners are rapidly becoming one of the biggest parts of our community? Oh, These that's major. There's not that. Are bad. they really? Because no, I've, I've really. seen it, it and I wonder you know, how big it is. This person is going to say that I have a lot of factual information that I will send you on that. That's not true. We have a lot. I, I actually have my own small little YouTube channel. I have I have done a ton of interviews with detransition young girls who regret this, who did it at the age of 16, by the age of 18 and 19, wish they never did it. They lose their breasts. They lose their actual they cannot have babies because they become sterile because of the testosterone. I'm sterile. I can never, if I wanted to have a baby, that's just not going to happen. So this is why, this is my argument here. So there, there's a growth period here with these young people. If we're not, if we're not on some level giving them mental health care and understanding, what does this mean to you to be trans? Do, what does it actually mean? And what about you... setting, setting someone up for needing more plastic surgery to blend in? Like, but, but by pushing this age further and further, see and that's some, the thing like, right there. You're that's possibly what they want. pushing someone to need to spend tens of thousands of more. I would dollars. rather do that than to transition a child at 16 well, years I'm old. I'm happy that I've well, that yeah, I was that's able great. to stop I'm happy my for puberty you. and that I don't have to, I didn't have to spend that's so fantastic. much money on I'm happy plastic for you. surgery to look this. But way. I'm talking about young women. I'm not talking about young men. I'm talking about girls who are now becoming boys, which is a higher, faster rate of transition than biological boys. You Biological opposite. girls are the ones transitioning at a rate of 4,000%. So I have a different argument than you. So I, my, my, my way of being is I'm perfectly fine. Look at me. I transitioned at the age of 30. I went through some turmoil. I lived as a gay woman. I ha I, I'm not going to say that my life wasn't bad if things happened to me, but I'm so happy I transitioned at the age of 30 also, because I made my own choice as an adult. You know what I think about detransitioning? Quitters. Wow, that's a shame. But to say that that's about sad. kids who are like, at 12, oh, okay. Um, I think that I can acknowledge that there's some truth in what you guys are saying in the sense of I too at a very young age started feeling gender dysphoria. I started feeling like, oh, there's something incongruent with the way I'm seeing myself and the world, right? But I think that's a very big difference from being able to have the knowledge and consent to what transition actually entails at that age. So um, you said you saw after your puberty early and you're in your happy case. I'm not denying that exists. I know people for that's the case and they're and they're happy now. However, I think that for the idea that a child at let's say 12 is the standard age of start blockers, at 12 to understand that that sterilizes them, that they cannot have children in the future. What 12 year old can really that's have right. the mental capacity to make that decision? The answer is none. I There's agree actually that. a lot of studies based on the brain chemistry of children to know that they don't understand long term decisions. Totally. I tried I agree my transition with that. at 20 and I wasn't even thinking about kids. Took yeah. until 24 I'm talking someone. about the the space where um, between 16 and 18, where you're right. where you're starting to enter adulthood, mm -hmm. and you're starting to have the like the ending of puberty is starting. Right. Mm -hmm. I think 12 is extreme. I would agree with you on that. But the sad yeah, thing is that's what's happening. But they're doing it to 12 year olds. Sense. Well, they're actually doing it. They're actually giving surgery to 13 year olds. And then you think that, about so Jazz Jennings is probably the most famous. I guess case I just can think of more horrible things happening to trans people than that. But these aren't trans people. But that's these, the case. This is yeah. what's happening right well, now. Well, to our just, community, like to. But the thing is, I mean, for there to be a four thousand percent right? increase, especially in young girls identifying as trans, that's biological females. Yes. When it used to be flipped, it was mostly trans women. You just feel like that's like that's the emergency at hand. But you, usually, it's like it, it's always like parent supervised, isn't it? Like if you're young yeah. and transitioning, it's all like Has they need. An, it's, it's always like adult supervision. Mm -hmm. So like. Isn't it the parents' fault for even allowing that to begin with? Uh, there's well, a lot the of blame to place on the children, yeah. uh, on yeah. the sorry, on the parents, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's but, where I'm, that's where I feel like it's coming from. It's kind of like, but I think that there's a lot of misinformation even yeah. in the medical community about transitioning. So we're all a little older than these trans kids we're talking about now, in the sense of like, do you guys think you were fully informed on all the effects, side effects, and ramifications of all the things you've done in your transition? We're talking <clears throat> hormones, surgeries, all that when you went in to go get it, because I know personally. I had a 30-minute doctor appointment and was prescribed estrogen. I was never told, this makes you infertile. Maybe freeze your sperm if you want to have kids. I was. Okay. Well, a lot of the times they're not. And that was mm. in California that I did that. That was so. Crazy. And I went to an a very good doctor. I watched the video. They put a little video on. Okay. Well, that's more than most people get. That's <laughs> more really, than most people like, get. You're going to be trans now. <laughs> but you should give you like a therapist first, don't they? Yeah. Not anymore. Now? No. See, before they used to, they used to like, they used go to the therapist you. first. Mm -hmm. I like that idea because I was kind Me of like- too. Yeah. 
you, then you can really tell. I'm glad I didn't have going, to though, but... because I'll say I needed my hormones right then. When yeah. I decided and I knew that it was time for me to transition, I'm glad I was able to get it. And them. how old were you when you transitioned? 21. Well, but also, not everyone's adult. as decisive as you. Not everyone <clears throat> knows who they are as much as you did at that yeah, age. But it's a free country, right? But well, you're an adult. But you when you're a minor, choices. you don't. You don't know, it's not a free country for a minor. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Um, but, but you're exactly right, Elena. There used to be a lot of safeguards in place, especially if you want to hail back the Bucks Day. Mm-hmm. You had to damn near live as a man, live as a woman for that's two right. years before you could do anything. And that's a bit extreme to me. But the idea that now we have affirmative care, so actually these therapists can lose their jobs mm-hmm. if you yeah. push back on a kid saying they're trans at all. Especially in Canada, you can literally go to jail because mm-hmm. you're committing conversion therapy in Canada. So. Okay. It's like these activists, I think, are shooting themselves in the foot. You're removing all the safeguards to transition, and then you're also not wanting to deal with the fallout of these kids who are getting mutilated before they can have a driver's license. Got you know, it. we fought to get the, this to a disorder. It's important that it's a mental disorder. Why is it important? Because now it becomes a disorder that is covered by insurance. I fought for years to get these surgeries covered by insurance. Now today, the community is saying this is not a mental disorder. Anyone can just be trans. Well, the problem with that is now now that's an elective surgery. And now no, not one single insurance company has to pay for it because it's an elective surgery. So when you start to understand and unravel where we're going, which is like anyone can be trans, you don't need gender dysphoria to be trans. That is the most ridiculous and also hurtful space to be in for many people. Not just anyone can be trans. You need to go through a diagnosis. You need to understand what it means. You need to understand the long-term effects of the testosterone or the estrogen on your body. I could tell you I almost died from long-term effects of testosterone. It it actually fused my whole reproductive system because I was one of the first people to do this. Yet nobody understood what was going on with me. And I yell it at the top of my lungs and the community just hides it under the thing. And now I have all these young trans guys. Hey, Buck, I have these cramps. I'm like, I know exactly what it is. And why are you having those cramps? They should never be having those cramps because I already told you why they're having these cramps. So what what do you blame for this like social contagion Mm -hmm. element or the 4,000% increase or whatever? How do you explain that? TikTok. It's the one factor. It sounds silly, but it it's really always is. TikTok. Yeah, you're right. Is it really TikTok? Oh my god. Not not entirely. Social I think media. it's a it's a really destructive collusion of big pharma who only yeah. stands to gain money. Because keep in mind, these kids that start on these blockers, hormone surgeries, they are lifelong medical patients. We're all lifelong medical patients That's unless right. we want to detransition. We're always there every month to pick up our prescriptions for hormones. Mm-hmm. We are Yep. In some ways, slaves to big pharma. Okay. So that's another thing that I don't Preach, think minors sister. right. Another minor cannot uh, can consent to that. So you think they really know that they'll be taking drugs for the rest <clears throat> of their life? You think the parents really know that? So yeah, there's parental consent, but then you have therapists who can't push back at all, or they'll get you know mm-hmm. lose their license. And then you have a lot of medical professionals that there's a very very strange, and this might be too in the weeds with this shit, but there's a very, very strange, weird way that the ideology behind trans has captured people in the medical industry. A lot of these doctors are fucking weird. Yeah. A lot of these doctors are fucking weird. A lot of them have sexual fetishes for the trans people they treat. A lot of them um, are kind of like mad scientists in a lot of ways in which they will say things can happen from the drugs you're taking that really can't. Like, um, I've had a doctor say that you can lose height going on estrogen. You're not losing height on estrogen. If you're 60 on estrogen, you're going to lose 60 off of estrogen. So, and this is this is a doctor in Beverly Hills who a lot of the girls see. I know who you're talking about. I'm sure you do. He fucks, <laughs> he fucks a lot of his um, patients for like surgery too. Oh, I know. And that's I know. demented. Yeah, no, I know a lot of girls who like yeah, would fuck him for like nose jobs. You could fuck for surgery? Well, that <laughs> yeah, doctor, you can. can. That fuck, doctor, you yeah, can. Fuck <laughs> for anything, Adam. No, he hmm. only treats like trans patients yeah. and like... <laughs> They'll literally be like, oh, yeah, I got a nose job. Fucked him for it. You know, so it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. In the trans community, I think there's a lot of hurt people. There's a lot of people who, in a lot of ways, were disadvantaged in life because dealing with this crazy thing called gender dysphoria puts us back steps ahead. Like, a lot of us didn't get to live our full lives until we were done with that process or at least midway through it or whatever. And so it's like a lot of us are hurting. We don't have the mental capacity to deal with these larger issues of like, how do we protect kids? But also I'm trying to get my life in order and get my transition in order and sports, who cares about sports? But at some point, some people in the community have to be like, okay, now we're on a point where we have to talk about these larger issues. So mm-hmm. it is what it, I mean, it is what it is. Like, Where do you stand on sex work in our community? Um, I have nothing against sex work in the community. I have a, obviously knowing a lot of trans people most trans people do sex work. 
I wish that we were in a climate where trans people weren't forced to do sex work because while I support every trans person's right to do it, a lot of them do feel forced. You just said most and nobody yeah, pushed true. back at That's all. Not true. Yeah, but, but, is but, that but, true? I think most trans women at some point, even though doing it now, have done sex work mm. at some point. Yeah. Whether it's escorting, OnlyFans, yeah. I don't know what that's really. I say a lot, right, but, but I don't know about most. I mean, there's a lot. What of do you think? You know this word. Well, in my opinion, definitely in my, back in the day, yes, yes, I, mean, I know that for we, sure. But mm-hmm. nowadays, there's a lot of. Trans in my experience, trans women, not necessarily yeah. trans yeah, men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, I think it's, it's a, a different space for trans women. I think yeah, trans women yeah. have a harder time on many levels. Where you know, I could grow a beard and put a jacket on, and do you think it's harmful me. to the trans community that so many of us are sex workers? No, 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 not at all. I think that it's a great way for you know. Listen, until recently, you couldn't get hired at a regular job. You know, doing now yeah. you have Target and Starbucks. If you're trans, you're going to get a job, right? And I think that in some ways that's great because we do need a leg up in that sense. But yeah. I'm speaking more to the people who. You know, I moved to LA a few years ago and moved out recently. But when I was living in LA, I first got here, I started becoming friends with all these trans women, making all these like besties with all these like Instagram trans women. And I'm like, I'm thinking they're all like rich from Instagram and shit. And it's like, oh no, they're all <laughs> escorting. Yeah. And I guess that's the case with women in general who are Instagram influencers. But I was going to say, the reality, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but we can all agree a lot of trans <clears throat> women do sex work. We yeah. can disagree on the word most or whatever, but. Um, yeah. I just wish trans people had more options. That's my only thing. I think it's the well, best I mean, fucking like, option. They do have options, but the reason, why, like, the reason why they feel forced into it is because like, a lot of them are kind of like, I hate to say it, like, they're like not as passable. So like, they're like, I need to get these surgeries quick and ASAP. I can't, yeah. my name And it can be a way to yeah. do it. It's kind of like, my oh, name hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah, they're like, my no, name hasn't yeah. changed yet. My right. face is like, not am. it. And so they go into sex work because it's quick, it's easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they get that money to get their surgeries to go apply for regular jobs. And then once they make that much money, yeah. it's hard to go back. It's to hard like, to go back, yeah. Yes. I, and, and, and I get it. And, you know, also a lot of us come from broken homes. Mm-hmm. A lot of us don't really have parents like that. And if we mm-hmm. do, they're not cool with it or they're abusive or whatever. Not everyone. Um, so a lot of us find what are called trans mothers, right? Like we move to a big city and we meet an older trans woman. There My you mother. go. There you go. Um and they'll show you the way because that's the way they knew. And so it's part of the culture. But yeah. um, I don't know. The options are increasing, which is great. I but. think it's really actually kind of cool that tra- so many trans people do sex work because I think sex work is a fucking awesome job. And I think that I'm, I'm just so proud of it. And I think that it's amazing. And it's so cool that girls can make so much money and be independent. And I, I actually don't think there's any kind of issue with tra- like a lot of trans people doing it. I, I wish people didn't feel forced into doing sex work in general. Devil's course. advocate. It's dangerous and it's illegal. Uh, not all sex work is illegal. <laughs> I just know and people at home are thinking that. And I mean, there's got to be at least some true to it, right? Illegal, That's right. And I agree with you that it is dangerous. Right. Dangerous. And a lot of trans murders are from that exact scenario. I know. But mm. it's just, I'm going to tell you, you know, my life, I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for my job. I love my job. I, I Firmly will stand with that. Like so, as a trans woman sex worker, I'll never you, retire. I'll you, be a hotel. Do you disclose? Day. Do you disclose that you're a trans woman during your sex work? Of course, every, you kind of have to. Absolutely, that's what, like, no, that's everybody like it more. That's they the market love it. where it's, are you kidding? Where you're like super well, no, it's just a question because, because there are some trans women who do not disclose. Well, I mean, what do you feel about that? About women who don't disclose? Yeah, I'd like to hear some thoughts on that. What girls do? That's me. I hope they don't get hurt. I don't disclose at all ever. I'm not gonna lie. You could have got me. Yeah, I know. I definitely never disclose anyone because, like, but they even during kinda, sex, you would not disclose. Okay, no, during sex, you could, you, I, you could. I, I, I would have not known. Sexual, sexual space. Would you disclose? Uh, you're you're there well, too. Well, it depends. What's kind you of got, like, example, like dating wise. Oh, if right, I'm like Sorry. meeting someone, I'm not going right. to tell them right off the of bat. Course, because right. it's kind but of. I mean, like, in an actual sexual I kind of interaction. Yes, I mean before it gets to that point, I always disclose it once you sex. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a a point of contingent in our in our community, right? You're not. You don't have to. Disclose your trans. Kind of like for safety, though. But I mean, like, of course, yeah, yeah I disclose I, all the time. Before it gets to like sexual, like intercourse, I always like bring it up ahead of time. Oh, but yes. I do it like yeah. away from like I, I always do it over the phone, never in person. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Really? Am I gonna That's fall a That's girl? Yeah, yeah, I never ever do it in person. That's Am I gonna person, fall a girl who goes to a club and ha- is post op and just mm-hmm. hooks up with some guy who's mm-hmm. never even gonna call her again? Mm-hmm. No, no. Like, just know what you're getting yourself into because it is dangerous. That's how we get murdered. They have SRS. They know. That's how we actually. That's right. They know. They fucking know. And, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I think all girls, you know, transition is a very intense thing. And every single girl I know goes through those phases where they want some type of weird validation. I see it all the time. Yes. I went through it myself. I have no shame in saying that. We all go through those phases where we think, oh, if maybe if this person who wants to fuck me sees me as a cis woman, that somehow will validate me. 
and I think it's just an immaturity thing, you know. It's a younger It does thing. get people hurt, but, like, ultimately, it is totally up to us individually if we want to disclose mm-hmm. that we're trans. If we're getting into a sexual situation, I think it's safety. Otherwise, it's, I don't think it should matter. I don't think people should even, like, pointing it out, honestly. I think it's kind of annoying, honestly. Some people say it's rape. Well, I do I think we should point it out. That. People say that, though. They'll be like, oh, that's basically rape. Oh, I mean, people some people might, but then it's like there's a lot of things people don't tell people before they fuck. So it's yeah, I was that's gonna not say rape. Rape. rape is a dramatic. That's not rape. That's a little excessive. But rape is yeah. a dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, certainly not rape. Is yeah. it? Is it duplicitous? Is it like? Do you think that it's morally wrong for a trans person to bring somebody home from the bar and and hook up with them without disclosing? I personally do. Is, why? I do. Why? Because I'm not a biological male, and they're gonna see me as a biological male, and I have a vagina, and when my pants come down and a pussy pops out, it's gonna freak somebody out, and I don't want to be in that situation. So I'm I'm very honest about who I am. I want to have sex. I don't want to go home and like there's gonna be a fist fight or I'm gonna get stabbed because my pussy popped out no. so for me it's me i'm not saying any of you can do whatever you want but for me i've always been a huge advocate of for disclosure because not only for me what about you what about what about if you think i'm just a biological man and i'm gonna whip it out and I, that's not gonna happen and how that's not fair to you so i see it as a two-way street on some level i wasn't sure if you're post up i no no i have a vagina yeah okay, I'm, well, I'm, I'm the man with the <laughs> pussy i mean that's well, no, how i became I famous that. i just don't i don't know I mean, people change I don't, we all yeah. evolve, <laughs> people right? change we all change well, hello you go like, check every once in a while <laughs> no, no, I don't. six month update so Sorry. so for me it's always about safety and it's always about being honest i'm Question. an honest and while we're post stop would you go the same exact way yeah i would and while we're here because on a platform where trans people are yes because the penis isn't safe. isn't like a biological male penis so, so you feel like you would you feel like it's wrong to like lead someone on because it's not a like a a yeah, a, a, I do. A, okay, because yeah. I because I'm not a biological male. But is I'm it bio- rape for someone? Well, I don't think it's rape. Okay, I don't think it's rape. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. I think it's not. I, I think it's not consensual. Oh. It's not. We're not having consensual sex now because okay. you think I'm a biological male and I'm not. I'm an actual biological female. So I just, for me, I feel like it's just going to be a much. And my experience in doing that has always been so amazing. People are like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Thanks I mean, for telling me that. Here's would, an interesting yeah. question. That's always been my experience. Is it more or less immoral than not telling someone you have herpes or AIDS? That's right. That's right. Um, well, I think that's a whole other conversation. I mean, I personally think that if someone has HIV and they're undetectable, you know, like they're on top of their health. They're oh, open no, about it know. with their partners. Oh, no, I would rather know, I would too. want to know if you have HIV. Yeah, me too. I mean, I would want to know, too, but I'm just saying yeah. people, people, like, live their normal it's lives with HIV. It's deceptive, which, like, yes, that's wrong. But I think it's but also shame. We shouldn't feel shame around ourselves. I we don't. shouldn't feel. Yeah, I but I'm just disclose. saying, like, some people who don't disclose, I think there's a shame around that on some level, like, even yeah. with HIV. We're all on a journey. I think everyone takes takes the wrong turn sometimes. We all do things that we maybe shouldn't do, get us hurt. It's not good, but I mean, it's part growing. Like. Buck, you're going to know what I'm talking about because you've been in the adult industry, but w- <laughs> would the real world be better off if the norm was that people had like consent apps and forms like loaded up on their phone? Because it almost kind of feels like that's where the world's going. It would certainly save a lot of people some time. That's in the porn right. world, like that's that. normal. That's it's right. kind of like you didn't transition to remind everyone that you're not yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind yeah. of like, that's not really, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And Same that's a turn like, off. It's like, who wants to do that before they have sex? Like, it's like, you know, you, that's foreplay you know to me. You're getting yourself into <laughs> well, right. Some people hang out and fill some, some forms out together. You know? <laughs> Everyone just yeah. be nice and don't lie, and then the problem is solved. People be yeah. nice to trannies, trannies don't lie. That's right. Up Got until it. sex, at least. You know, like yeah. I say, yeah. pussy yeah. stuff all the time. Someone, yeah, it is what it is. If you're yeah. getting to know someone, you don't feel like you need to talk about it. Like, oh why? no, definitely not. Like, why would you have to? Because there's no intimacy. But if there's intimacy or sex involved, I do think that it's important to have that comp. But you know, you don't meet somebody and say I'm trans. I never do. Oh no, never. That's not why I transition. Okay, I hate when you know what I hate, and I think you'll agree with me on this. Okay. I hate when some of my trans friends be clocking me in front of my other friends. I'm like, girl, well, that's just hate. Why are we? That's, yeah, that's weird. No, 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 Define no, clocking. Hard to be friends with way. trans women, by the way. What? Like p- trans women are very competitive in a way that's very ugly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. I've had that experience. I've had a lot of wonderful trans. No, I've had I'm wonderful. Saying, ones, I don't have. Ne- I don't yeah. have any trans friends for that reason. No, <laughs> they're I, all competitive. Yeah, they are. I never met a single one that was kind of like uplifting. If it is, they're really thick behind your back. Yeah. I mean, I'm certainly better than her, but. Clocking somebody is just like acknowledging that they're trans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I honestly have a lot of great trans girlfriends, but you know, I think girls 
we have pitted, we get pitted more, against each other. I, mean, I do see true. more camaraderie in the sex work world between mm-hmm. trans women. It's like y'all are kind of all doing the same thing. It's like yeah. everyone kind of gets, gets their. I mean, plus they like collaborate what? a lot. You should become a porn star girl. No. Oh, I know. So you have so many ideas: athlete, porn star. Those neo Nazi those neo Nazi fans of yours, they will pay, girl. She said the Nazi fans. They will pay. I know they got money. Wow. She does. She disavows them. Come on, do porn. Do the world a favor. Come on. No. They want to um, see it, girl. N- no. I don't think I'd ever have a political show career hole. afterwards. What was your Blair? Wait, show <laughs> hole. Yeah. Wait, wait. What's her porn, porn name? Where's Kate? Claire Gray. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Just Claire switch Gray. it up a little bit. Claire Black. White. Oh, black. okay. That's fine. <laughs> You can pick. See, I've already your thought about name. it. If I were, but no, no. You've already thought about it? She's thought about it. You're Show not neo-Nazis. <laughs> you might see her asshole soon. I'm calling Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> Get her on the phone. Get her over here. I, oh I, I have a question. So when it comes to pronouns, I'm sure we all agree they're important. We should respect each other's pronouns, chosen pronouns. To an extent. Do you feel like to some extent this whole pronoun thing has been kind of like hijacked by weird yes. white yes. heterosexual yes. Yes. women? Yes. Yes. And like yes. Yes. does does a blatantly cishet 30-year-old white woman need to have she, her no. in her Instagram bio? Or is this just like I'm the sure most retarded thing you've ever seen in your life? Probably agree. I'll, I'll it's show retarded, you. dude. Okay, thank you. It's, it's just also as patronizing speech. as seeing Black Lives Matter and someone's uh bio which also just, is i'm like yeah. hmm. hi I know unless we, you're going to marches just don't put that in your i don't know if we can pull this up i don't know if this is asking the editors too much but this is a trans lesbian on tinder it's a man with full Ren. chest hair full beard and this is what lesbians deal with on tinder and this person's did you top or bottom huh did you top or bottom? i was not i didn't <laughs> encounter this person on tinder um but that's what you mean right it's like yeah. come on it's like just straight men hijacking <laughs> yeah what used to be just like basic respect for trans people because yeah. the reality is like i remember even like way before i transitioned um i would go to the grocery store and this is when i had short hair no hormones no anything and i would get called she at the cash register sometimes because just my energy i guess so it's like people used to just respect horm- uh, hormones pronouns on like a basic level like if even if they could tell someone trans or like they're trying that's a she Mm -hmm. whereas now it's like you could literally announce she her tomorrow and a big percentage of people following you would be like i have to respect that i don't think my fans so much but (laughs) (laughs) if i was maybe a little bit in a different space maybe yeah i mean i'm sure you all were around during adam (laughs) let's specify adam 22 y'all that could be the bonus who's got the stockings and the wig in the car i don't know what do you go to it's me i have it there we go yes adam you ready no not not at this time maybe after the wedding okay okay we got a few months fair enough I'm sure you've all been around during the scene age when everyone was calling themselves bisexual. We're having a resurgence of that where people are wanting to be edgy and the new edgy is being kinky, poly, and trans. Non-binary. Or or being trans or non-binary. And in all of these cases, regardless of whether it's trans, kink, or polyamory, they're all being toxic in every one of those communities Thank and you. kind of blowing up all those communities. I'm so glad we agree on that because that's, that's right. like I one of the too. biggest things I get hate for is that I'm, this word is even disgusting because it's just such a reach, envy-phobic, which is like phobic against non-binary Weren't people. you non-binary at one point? No, I never, no, back in uh, the day. Do you believe non-binary people exist? There's, exist, they are human beings that exist and then they call themselves that. Have you so met someone who you truly believe to be non-binary? I'm just my question. Mm-hmm. I have. I've met many people who I, I truly believe they're what very androgynous. What makes them non-binary? But, well, if they're just very androgynous and to be honest with you, it could go either way. And are I, we I'm trying to real. ignore indigenous identities There's a lot of people who, who do sit in between. I, I'm not well, saying I agree with you on the like, total domination of like... Here, yes, it is. People just no, wanting to be queer. That, you know? That's not indigenous. Non-binary did not come. That that's that's called. It's a different word for it. Like, that's right. The word non-binary. But non-binary did not Google come Trends, from the But Fafafine and Katoy and all that other stuff. That, that's was, different. That's not non-binary. Non-binary is a choice these people make within the indigenous community. That's a whole other situation. You, you we're talking about white people, people taking on. But we're non-binary. making a choice to transition. We could have choice. But, but non-binary is a choice. I know what you're talking about, and because I was big this. Right, and when I was a teenager, before like the there's even words for this shit, it's like you can Google old pictures of where white. I literally looked like one of these fucking people. I had a fucking purple mullet. It was just it was a nightmare. But like I was I never this like one. weird hyper political. I was never like I'm trans. Like I don't like that they speak over us. You know what I mean? It's like these people are usually the most mentally ill, crazy, and aggressive, <laughs> and they become no, the me, voices. Maybe, <laughs> but but they they 
tend to make the rules for the community because they're the fucking loudest. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm never quiet to shut them up because I agree with you on that. However, I do think there are still people that don't really fall on female or male categories. Like, I'm not talking about biology. I'm just talking about vibes. Well, gender fluid is an old thing. It's like, like fucking what's know. yours. I yeah. feel, I'm not going to sit here and tell you who you are. I, of just, course. I just don't give a fuck. Like, but the problem people, is they tell us who they are. That's right. They say that they're trans. That's right. And then they want to be included in the right. conversation when yeah. we're just trying to clearly I get will the include them in the together. conversation. But I, I want to lead it, to be honest with you. I want to be part a, a, a leader of the conversation as a trans woman because I've been but through But they don't want to let you. But I don't have the well, same experience as a non binary. Maybe individual people, but on the grand scheme of how the. I have non binary friends. That depends because there are. And there's no hate to them. There are non-binary like, people that are that get surgeries. They may just not get the same prescribed set that trans women or trans men. Still men not my same experience. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not it's definitely. Not but that's why. Why am I lumped some in with of it that? Can but parallel more than you would think. I get what you're saying because I've seen that. Yeah. But the idea that they should be included in trans, that's right. I think, is an well, issue. Well, here's something I think it's yeah. also important to note, though. Is here's the deal. If it, say you know fucking extremist right-wing people who are just mad homophobic transphobic all of that come for us they're coming for all of us okay they're not they're not gonna fucking spare the non-binaries they're not gonna spare the trans women or the trans men they don't like any of us so i guess i just feel like why set up all these fucking dividers but in, you know in our community? But you could probably but you attest to that about, not being true you right talk about extremes and there's always extremes right. just like there's left-wing extremists that are mm-hmm. fucking commies that go out and destroy buildings every fucking election year however mm-hmm. The reality is, I think that there's a very large unspoken of majority that are totally cool with people who want to live their lives the way they live it. And they're cool with people like us. They're just not cool with why are you allowing 12 year olds to have their breasts cut off? Why are you trying to police speech? Why are you putting your dicks out in locker rooms? And that's why I'm like, can we just find our lane where we optimize respect in society and just stay in it and not try to bounce around? Well, you're just, you're asking too much of, of human beings. I mean, we're all just so maybe fucking it different. might be a utopian idea, but it I is feel a utopian like, idea. But I mean, we're all so different as people. Like, but we, we can get are. closer there than mm-hmm. dudes in weed spot with their dicks out and no one caring. We can get closer to the, the utopia than like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's and realistic, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. we might not fully What's realistic? Get there. I'm sorry, I'm confused. There's always going to be people that are like, fuck trannies. Okay. Oh, yes. But yeah, of course. Always. Yeah. But, yeah, that's right. But, but you yeah. probably have so a ton of... So if there's non-binary people who, maybe they're claiming our experience, maybe that's fucked up. Yeah. I agree. But It's gross and on, it's just incorrect. I don't like it either, but they're on our side. So let's just take a Are second. they though? No, when they're, they're the ones uh, that mean, are created. Here's not. the thing. LGBT acceptance, that's everywhere. I'm also not a YouTuber. I don't like sit there and listen to the masses. So... You I don't watch problems. YouTube despite being YouTube. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, I, I don't get, like, critique from non-binary people ever. Like, Oh, well, they all fucking hate me every single one. I believe that. Um. I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't know, like, what they're telling you or what they're saying to you, so I i can't, I don't know. Okay. I'm well, just saying, in my life, like, non-binary people, like, they, they'll listen to my experiences. They don't try to shut well, me down. Well, you can always like, meet individual people that are cool. I'm not saying everyone who identifies that way is a bad person. I'm not. I just don't like that it's considered the same thing as us yeah. because I think it takes away from us actually having the conversation about us and figuring out how we fit in society. So they let's can have figure a out how they about fit. us then. Right. Let's, they can figure out how they fit in society and more power to them if they want to figure that out on their own terms. But we can't even agree on like really basic shit, like what age you can do this shit and what bathrooms and shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Let's mm-hmm. get that sorted out. And then we can talk about dudes with beards talking about I'm trans because my pronouns are fucking they, them. I don't care. Right. I guess I just, with ages, bathrooms and all that shit, I just, it's like. Well, the bathroom thing's weird because it was like never an issue. It was never an issue. It feels ever. like. Something that people will cling on to. It, it, it's it's another one of those like to make trans people look creepy. Like I feel like That's I only right. ever hear stories, either really extreme stories. They're like really leftist stories about how someone got kicked out of a bathroom for being trans, or it's like another super right wing story where it's like some creep was in the we fucking women's bathroom. We are a political bathroom. football. We are bounced around from left to right and we're used as a weapon and we're used to raise money on this end, raise hysteria and money on this end, and it's it really fucking sucks. That's why. Like I said, I know that you don't agree with necessarily the content that I make. I know you said you didn't watch a lot, but it's like to have someone who, even though people do consider me extreme and you said I have Nazi fans, I'm actually very middle of the road. I'm actually very, I want all of us to have our rights. I want all of us to have respect, but I don't want dudes with dicks out in locker rooms because I think it makes us all look Mm -hmm. fucking bad. Here's the thought. The other day I uh, started a new gym and I live in Texas where people say it's just so bad or whatever, but I live in Texas and I was going to the gym and like, I had this thought and I've never had this thought in my fucking life. And it almost made me cry in public. I was walking to the bathroom and I was like, I hope no one here knows who I am, 
knows that I'm trans mm. and thinks that because I'm entering a fucking woman's bathroom in Texas mm. that I'm going in for some sort of nefarious reason. The fact that I have to think that way or at least even have that thought mm. is a fucking problem. And it goes to you show that. You shouldn't think about that, I girl. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But Nobody's thinking that. I, un- I, I know that. I know it's an irrational thought. But think about trans women that don't have the privilege to go into bathrooms and people notice or don't notice or whatever. Is, is it inappropriate for you to be fully naked in the locker room? Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. Are you kidding me? Like, no way. So that's just the line with trans people. You think they should respect that? And- that's one of the lines. Mm, okay. Wait, you mean like like if a woman has a penis, she has to wear a towel as opposed to a woman who doesn't have a penis? I think it's inappropriate if you have a dick. Yeah. To be walking around with your dick out in a woman's oh. locker room with women, with Girl, grandmothers. Girl, what does it women? mean you're going to walk up to someone and whack it in their face? Like, no but the locker room is fucking dick. crazy. Like, I'll I mean, just I say this. As, as an adult That's male, definition. in the like, gym, in the locker room, I've seen a ton of penises. And I've seen almost no penises my whole life aside from, like, you know, porn and stuff. So I will say that, like... The locker room is very unique because it's this place where it's normalized to just see each other's genitalia. Yeah, that's you, why you almost like, never why do you otherwise. Why draw the line at penises? Because, because it makes in, cisgender women uncomfortable. He sees a lot of dicks because he's going the in the men's locker room. The majority of them are room. uncomfortable. No way. I'm sorry. Well, but I disagree I'm sorry. With this you. is where trans women <laughs> kind of get me fucked up and get no, like the that's... world fucked up is that we don't have sometimes that respect for biological women that they are uh-huh. the vulnerable of the two sexes. That's right. And a lot of women are not. You think I don't have respect for that? I have no, I'm not a lot saying of I'm not for, I'm not saying you lack respect. Women. I'm saying that trans women I think have sometimes a hard time understanding that a lot of biological women That's right. don't want to see dicks That's w- right. when they're out in public. I they think a lot of cis women have a hard time understanding that trans women sometimes just want to like enjoy their day and not like worry about who the fuck is watching them. If if your way of enjoying your day is taking your dick out in a women's locker room, I think that that's a problem. I'm sorry. There's a lot of ways I agree I can with enjoy that, my but day. I mean, I'm just well, saying. The... At spas, people hang out fucking naked. It's normal. Like I've been naked at a spa before. I wasn't. Everyone trying, should have the same trying to be in a weird. locker room. Sorry, it just, just I've been at a spa cool. naked with other so women. Trans no, there's a lot of women that have been danger. raped. There's a lot of women that have been raped. Okay, but I was so trans women should be with other women. Dick out. You're not putting yourself in danger if you're not taking your dick out in public. No one fucking cares. They're saying if everyone needs to have dicks in the same. In the okay. same uh, locker room. No, she's so. saying trans women should not be taking their penis out in the, in the locker this room. This is That's the basic one, y'all. This is the so, basic one. If you have a dick, yeah. you're not supposed to be around yeah. a bunch of grannies and mothers and children in locker rooms with your dick out. This is the basic one. It's, it's kind of like just being considered for others. That's right. Yeah, That's exactly but, right. Yeah. There's a lot of women that have That's been raped and have like trauma that don't want to walk into a room though. and see a dick. Yeah, but... But and let's on the be real, a lot of that, trans women I, uh-huh. are not like us that have actually transitioned. A lot of trans women, like the wheat ball person, yeah. has a beard and short hair and a dick and is like, That's I'm right. trans and gets That's away right. with it. I just, That's I right. don't want to like, I'm not going to sit here and not enjoy my life because of what the appendage between my legs. I Like, I personally don't give a fuck if it offends somebody else. I'm not doing anything nefarious with it. Like... I'm but not, there's I a. I, I, I have happen. a feeling you're not right. I feel like you're just going in the room. You're doing your thing. I've only but done it we're once. We're talking I went to about. Spa. We're it was talking a beautiful about, moment. Nobody gave a fuck. We're we talking about relaxing. the ones who are not passing, but a lot of who are totally walking in too. and claiming to be trans women when they're clearly not trans women. They're dudes. Well, then you're talking are, about a lot completely different that's not trans like that, but they're claim look if they're going to say they're trans now we have to respect that that's the problem with what's going on the mm-hmm. self id anyone can say they're trans you could say you're trans my friend which means nobody could stop you from going in Legally, the woman's locker room now on the flip side of that we're not ever talking about trans men are we are we talking about trans men in the male locker room ever do you mm-hmm. ever hear that do you ever hear trans men in sports do you ever hear men having a problem with people like me why do you no. think that is a lot of trans. Let, let's just why be fucking real. Let's be real here. Why do trans you trans women and trans men still went through that socialization as their That's biological right. sex? That's so right. So a lot of these trans women are out here literally just acting like dudes and think that they That's can right. talk about you. Go into locker rooms <laughs> and whip their dick out, and everyone's supposed to be cool. I'm really not. I'm truly not. Like I'm talking about like <laughs> it's funny. very predatory male behavior. Yep. Yeah. Again, I swear I'm not talking about you. I don't care. But to whip your cock out in front of yep. a bunch of women and think it's supposed to be okay. That's right. Right. Usually they cheer when I do It's it. kind of like, um, <laughs> do, you have, do you have any trans friends where they just they tip their tits out all the time? Right. And that's cool. It's, it's, kind, of between between us. it's kind of like for men, it's okay to be shirtless. So they, like, there are times where like I've taken my tits out randomly. And my husband's like, see, that's the that's the boy in you because it's like <laughs> a boy thing to do. But like cis girls would never just flash their tits with because right. like we still have that boy mentality for me. That's I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'm like, look at my tits. That's that linger. Yeah. So it's kind of, I get what you mean. We're kind of like for them just walking their dicks out. It's kind of like, that's like, 
where the boy but, mentality is still a little bit there. Yes. But also, also women feel about... very, women feel, women have a different experience. Men never complain of, I'm naked in the men's locker room. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. No man has ever said a word to me about it. They stare, yeah. they're not sure. Maybe I had do? a con. What, I mean, it's what? what Blair because said. Because like, there's a Women are more vulnerable. That's right. The there's genders. a different yeah. socialization. Yeah. And I prove it so all the time. us being trans women, if we know that, we should be more considerate. That's right. And that's, that's where it's at. That's all women are saying. just like walking your dick out. That's right. At that point, like, I get you're just trying to be yourself, but like, be considerate that's knowing right. like females, cis females, they are more sensitive to that. That's exactly and right. Something's been taken away from my life by not using a locker room. Like, oh. I will say this. Okay. I was in a spa in like San Francisco. If I was in San Fran's If I was in the middle of nowhere at a spa, I probably wouldn't have done that. San Fran, you can legally walk You can do the anything. Too, so you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I also think there's like something to be said for just reading like the area and the room you're in. Like, yeah, some, right. yeah read the right. room. No, I'm like, be right. honest. Like, let's be right. honest here. Like, not, it's not fucking black and white. Like, That's right. there are plenty of spaces where, yes, of course, there are cis women naked and trans, and trans women can be naked too, and no one would give a shit. There are, that exists. That's it true. It does. It does. Right. That's, and no, it and does also exist. the same yeah. way that like if I were to for God forbid be in a men's locker room for any reason, I'm not taking my tits out. Right. Yeah. You, it's right. like, I'm sorry. Right. There is some just like how about this? I moved to China, I'm gonna learn Chinese. I'm gonna uh, accustom to the Chinese culture, right? I'm not gonna mm -hmm. sit there and with a chip on my shoulder and be like, I'm yeah. never gonna learn Chinese. That's I don't right. give a fuck about Chinese culture. If you wanna be a woman, respect female culture in some mm -hmm. ways. It's like and part of that's having a pussy in some ways. That's right. Right. You think so? If you're even a naked scenario, yeah. Naked. See Culture is a weird word for that. I, 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 I actually feel like my transition, I started my transition because of the deep empathy I felt for cis females. Mm -hmm. And I, I identified with them a lot in a lot of like what I, I saw did, happening. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the world with cis women. Like I, I was socialized male. Are all y'all attracted to men? I'm bisexual. I'm, I'm fucking okay, I'm fuck anything. Bisexual. Yeah. A lot of these issues are with trans women who are attracted to women. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. I'm, oh, because there like are different women. reasons why people are trans. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can Some of them are trans for fetish. Yeah. Well, just being real, that might be over people's true. heads or not. They're no, like I agree with you. To the other part, but, but I, I just think that like those people usually don't transition. <laughs> well, yeah, they're at the wee spa with a beard. But, <laughs> yeah. but the problem is, legally, they get classified as us, and they can go to right. women's prisons. There's another That's fucking right. topic we can jump into. That's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That so is a great how big time. a problem is that? Oof. Uh, a big it's problem. an increasing issue right That's now. Right. Um. Pretty much every state mm -hmm. you can be in a women's yeah. prison as a trans woman. So a full-blown man who has never identified as being trans ever in their life, yeah. never made any attempt to identify as female, is able to say, I'm yes. female, and yep. get unleashed into a prison where they're yes. by far the biggest, the strongest, That's and right. the, I believe it the was only in either penis. North Carolina or South yep. Carolina where there's an inmate who got, was it one or two women pregnant in the prison? Two. Yeah. Oh my two. God. Two. Raped them, got them yep. pregnant, and do you think they're in a men's prison right now? No, they're still in a women's prison. No. So... It is an issue because at the end of the day, despite the fact that we're trans and despite the fact that we've all transitioned and we're able to enter rooms and people perceive us as women, mm -hmm. we are different on a lot of in a lot of ways. Like I have empathy for really anyone in prison. I mean, it just seems like a horrible place to be. It sucks. Even the dudes who are raping chicks? Well, not, not that. I don't have empathy for those motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Um, they don't yeah, get to have that privilege of transitioning in prison. I'm sorry, you don't. And you don't get to self-ID as a trans person one day and all of a sudden be a woman and go into a women's prison. That that's happening here. Why don't in we California. talk about also though all the the like you know the history of trans women being put in men's prisons and getting well that's also well, fucked up. That's Although right. I've heard let's talk about that then. But it's we really should have a, up, right? we should have an actual up, trans space. Up, right? That's where I think they LGBT trans, wars come into place. Imagine putting me into a men's prison. Unless your identification is changed to female. Is your I, identification right say now. female? Well, you're right. You'll go to a male prison. I My identification says right? male. I don't think because I think your safety would be compromised. And yes. that's the gray area. And that's why that's it's a difficult right. conversation. But I, that's where I think LGBT words come into place. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, we're segregating men and women. And if people want to have this gray area, we have LGBT words. And I think that's, that's an right. easy solution. Although I've heard, and this is just hearsay, from trans women in prisons that it's actually like kind of chill to be a trans woman in prison no my friend actually because told me, you can he was locked up my friend That's he right. said actually girl gracie you would he was like you'd be the fucking queen because you find shit. a little husband yeah he'd be like you'd have everything you want in prison you might have more fun right. in prison than and I you know do. men fuck men in prison because they're so desperate so it's like if they'll see a trans woman they'll just see her kind of as the closest mm. yeah prison. Right. Um, prison is like since it's so long term 
trans women are, are girls in prison. But again, they don't get, have any women around. Rappers always talk about going into PC when you go to prison or jail, aka protective custody. Mm -hmm. And the thing that they will always say is like, well, you got to be around all the trannies and shit if you go into that shit. Mm -hmm. So you might get to kick it with some cool snitches. You probably got some good <laughs> stories. Uh. They got no reason not to tell you. Wow. Are you saying I'm going to jail? No, well, if you do. I hope I don't. But I, th I think what sucks about this conversation is like there's absolutely a place that like people like you should not be in a mental <clears throat> prison. However, it's like the person who gets the brunt of all now. these like ramifications of trans activism is women. Women mm -hmm. have to deal with trans women who may or may not rape them in, in women's prisons. Women have to deal with the locker rooms. Women have to deal with the sports. It's like, it sucks that it always falls on women. And mm -hmm. I just think that if you said you have very much empathy for women, so do I as well. I think Sorry. we should work on showing that more among us because I think it shines a good light on us to acknowledge that. Yeah. I also think that like, you know, acknowledging that, you know, we also want to make life better for us as women. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not just cis women, you know. We, life's hard as a we woman, deserve period. Shit too. Trans woman, That's cis woman, it's, it's hard to be a woman, okay? I, I know I'm a woman. I've walked through the world as a woman. And I I know, I don't know what it's like to be a cis woman, but I am I can tell you right now, I know it's hard. So yeah, I am I just think that, like, you know, it's hard to be a woman. That's not up for debate, right? Like, I have a question for Blair. So I saw a post. Um, how do you feel about trans girls in beauty pageants? Because a cis girl posted and she was like, they that because there was a law that passed that like trans girls could compete in pageants. And then these girls are mad and they're like, trans girls are just taking everything from us. They just need to leave some things for us. I <laughs> well, think so how do you feel about trans girls? Because there was a big win pageants. like a couple days ago, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was this viral speech. Well, yeah, it's girls. Wrap yeah. it up, girls. So like, um, how do you feel about that? Wrap it up, girls. I think that sometimes people get mad about shit that they shouldn't necessarily yeah. be mad about. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that while I'm always the first person, notoriously, to like call out the bad behavior in the trans shit, it's like if a bitch is winning a beauty pageant because she's actually pretty enough, and that's the thing, yeah, right? The she has to actually look good enough because that's there right. was one person who won. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. This person <laughs> won. You shady queens. <laughs> it was a whole group of just gorgeous girls. And then there's one overweight, super obese so that makes her ugly and disgusting. Well, no. It means She's it's a beauty pageant and you're signing up to That's have your right. beauty That's right. There's standards. Judged. And if someone's winning because they're trans as a trophy win, that's gross. But I don't agree with people freaking out that much about it. It's like, it's a Maybe beauty pageant. There's bigger shit to win. A yeah. beauty oh, pageant no, is such a hot. stupid idea in the first place. But it like, it's it's kind of depressing when you watch a beauty pageant and every <laughs> single woman on stage looks exactly the same. They all have the same yeah, fake boobs, yeah, that, whatever. But then the idea that a woman is going to win just because she's trans, even though she looks nothing right. like any other one. It's just like, what, what? to an average dude like me, I'm watching this like, yeah. this is absurd. I'm checked out. I'm going to go watch Andrew Tate. Not that. Not me, but like a lot of other people Watch clearly have gone Andrew in that Tate. direction, you know? Oh my God. No, but, but that, I'm not a Tate disciple. And but. I would say that even though I think it's sometimes petty to get so mad about that, that sort of stuff does add up and build resentment towards yes. trans people. It's like, That's really, right. this bitch is clearly getting a trophy win, and it's just those little things yeah. Yeah. that add up. When you look at the manosphere, I think it's like pretty much entirely based on men being asked to believe stuff that they don't actually believe. So then they have to create their own network to basically go have the discussions about things that they don't buy. Have you ever, yeah, though, I mean, yeah. considered that your opinion might not matter to everyone? You know what I mean? I really don't. I mean, I don't think that's relevant. If my opinion, no, I mean, matters that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like if if guys don't like, I don't really think if if a dude doesn't see me as a biological woman, or I don't know what you're talking about, really. But if a dude disagrees with me on anything, like I don't really care. But that's the whole point of a podcast, right? Is to try to come to some sort of understanding or consensus. Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you, like, I think a lot of there's this assumption that like a lot of people care when they don't. Like, I think like a lot of I think I hate the narrative of. We're trying to trick strip men into believing that we're women, like cis women. Like that's not what I'm doing. That's not. I'm sure that's not what y'all are doing. Like I don't there's feel no tricked. trickery involved. I feel like that's a huge narrative that gets pushed. I hear it all the time. Like just I was listening to your sled George thing, and y'all were talking. You were comparing fucking shapewear on a cis woman to like bringing home a woman and finding out she's transgender. <laughs> like it's you. It's you think it's this deceit, and it's like it just. To me, it's just really kind of dehumanizing because comedy podcast. But yeah, I mean, like yeah. we were kind of drawing a it. comparison <laughs> there. Because, but it's why you know. I said disclosure. It's why I talk about disclosure because you pass all like 
women. Like not, no one would ever think that. Not so there. it wouldn't be comfortable for somebody who thinks it's a cisgender woman going home with them. And those men were telling you that. That's what they're, they're being honest about it. They're not comfortable maybe taking a woman who's a trans woman home without understanding that. You have to look at the middle ground of that space there. I think and it's not just about valid. You. It just adds to this narrative that like we're all just trying to deceive. Well, men. I don't no, I it disagree. Exists. I don't hear that. It exists. I don't hear that. It exists. But it's, it's not it's, it's not the whole narrative. narrative. How But that's why you, I will how say How is it not a huge it's narrative? It's a huge narrative. When in it's court, a narrative. so many it's people a It's a narrative. Where you can see this. the Adam's apple in the person's picture who There's has laws died. Around this. They are trying to create a defense where that person did not know that that's the person real. was trans. And that the trans no panic sense. laws are disgusting. And that's right. And that's right. Let's talk about them. That's right. You know what that is, Adam? What? The trans panic laws? No. So it it's a legal, legal exception to hurting a trans person claiming that they deceived them. And these are on the books in like a lot of cities. They are yes, yes. It's, and it's and it's fucked up. And you always see the murder should never be excused. You Period. know the reason. Yeah, um, right. But I will say that's why it probably would have been valuable for when we have that conversation about disclosing. Mm-hmm. If you would have just been, like, even if it's not how you really feel, that's just right. for the sake that we're on a public platform where people are watching, for you to say, no, you don't do that. You know what I mean? It just would have been great. To be like, Wait, you, like deceiving people is, is wrong if you would have said that because then you can squash I, the narrative. The I narrative is squashable. I, 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 I never, I always disclose. I just think that I was talking about like on a date. But you said like I wouldn't be mad if someone did it. And it's like, no, yeah, on a date or something, but sex. I, sex I wouldn't is be mad personally because I'm trans. But that's, <laughs> well, yeah, you personally. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> but see, a lot of these like false narratives about us, I think, are easily squashable. But I think that so the awesome. trans community has been taught to just double down and double down and double down because we feel like the whole world's against us. And if we give them an inch, then they're just going to put us in fucking internment camps. And it's like, that's not necessarily the case. I think that a lot of people, and this is based on my Nazi fans, who uh, <laughs> communicate to me the Girl, value love of seeing a trans person that. who um, has like normal fucking views because they're not used to seeing that, you know? Yeah. I uh, have gone down the wormhole of trying to figure out how J.K. Rowling is transphobic. And it's all very confusing to me. So I just wanted to throw that out there. To me, she seems pretty reasonable. Um, Do you feel like there's a place? Oh, really? That's great. Is is there a place in the world for women who just want to have, like, biological women's groups? Is this necessary or is this okay for, like – Traditional women, I guess. Why can we have our own spaces, but they can't. That's right. They can, and we can, too. But they get a lot, they get attacked for it. Yep. So do we. Well, true. That's yeah, yeah, we do. Show the fuck out, and that goes back to not every lane is your lane. That's right. We're in the yeah. trans women lane. That's right. That's a very specific thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're in the women's lane. Yeah. And it's we like, can also be in the same lane, too. Sometimes they intersect. Yeah. Absolutely. They sure. Oftentimes they intersect. Sure. Oftentimes, yeah. For example, it's like, you know, when I moved to LA, I, come, I grew up in a small town in Northern California very different culture, obviously, moved to LA. And like, I never thought cat calling was a real thing. And then you walk down Hollywood Boulevard and you can't walk down if you're a woman or a trans woman. You get hella comments, hella people yelling at you. And it's like, so I came to understand what women were talking about when they mm-hmm. talked about cat calling being an issue and how it's dangerous because the moment you don't talk to them, suddenly you're in danger because they're like, fuck you. You know, it's mm-hmm. strange and you don't really know it's a thing until you experience it. So yes, our lanes intersect, but... Um, J.K. Rowling, you know, she was talking about like just having women's only women's shelters because trans women were coming in and fucking raping women in these women's shelters. And it's like, why can't she express that without being canceled or being attacked? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that doesn't take away anything from us. Well, I think it upsets some people who also feel like, you know, maybe there isn't a ton of shelter for like trans homeless people. And as you know, in the homeless the, the world of the home, you may know this. A lot of them are LGBT. There's a lot of LGBT homeless people. Especially youth. Yes. So I think that, like, well, whatever. I don't know. I read Harry Potter. That's about it. But, like, I I guess I just feel like we could talk about that, though. Like, what about the lack of housing for these, like, young kids who get pushed out of Well, that's changing, though. They are starting to make more places for LGBT youth and LGBT people who need to have rape centers. That's why it's important that we understand we need to have our own space as well, not just cisgender people, but we do. We're more comfortable in our own space at some... I don't think it's also comfortable to go... I wouldn't want to go into a men's shelter. I honestly don't think I would be comfortable in there, nor do I want to go to a male prison. And I I just feel like that is... That sounds like an important issue, but it doesn't seem like an issue that really has a lot to do with a billion 
billionaire, basically That's having right. her entire career, <laughs> you know, I, I can't say destroyed, but you know, having all the actors from her films like have Ridiculous. to take this like stand against Ridiculous. her and all this shit. Wait, and then for oh, me as a normal wrong. person, I go look yeah. into it and I'm like, she hasn't said anything Nothing. remotely it's controversial. And that so. makes normal people look at the trans movement like, yo, this is some crazy mafia yeah. shit. Right. That's but right. then Buck and I defend her and That's get right. fucking Nailed. dreams. And it's like, Okay, but like you said, you had to search so hard to find what she said that was that bad. If you have to search that hard, it's probably not that fucking That's bad. That's right. If you have to go through Google page after Google page, what did she really say that really set everyone off? It's not that bad. Mm -hmm. You know, she she said biological sex is real, basically. That's yep. it, which is it? I would assume we all can say I think people got is. annoyed by it because it's like, okay, why are you Well, annoyed's that? different than people standing oh, oh. outside her house taking pictures that's of right. her address being well, like, come kill this bitch. And yeah. that's our people. That's trans activists. And we have to take accountability for that. Yeah, we do. And be like, no, we're not. We're going to police that in our own community. Mm -hmm. I as we're agree that like, like most of what she said wasn't so unreasonable, but she did like a lot of tweets that were outright calling us men or in so many words. And I mean, maybe... I guess you can say that there's some sort of plausible deniability with that because it's not her direct words, but she has liked tweets that are blatantly trans misogynistic. And here's Several. why oh. I'm not going to say that she gets a pass for that because if you're liking ugly tweets, I haven't seen those tweets. So I couldn't judge mm -hmm. if they're really that bad or not, to be honest. But it's like you got to think about sort of the resentment that builds in this woman who's just, you know, whether she liked the tweets after or whatever, originally was just saying reasonable shit. And then gets people outside her house that are people like us, supposedly, threatening to kill her. And the whole world coming down on her. I'd like a few ugly tweets, too. I'd be like, yeah, they're all dudes. I don't give a fuck. I would, I would fucking be mad, too. You know? And th that's the thing, also. It's like, I'm trans, and, you know, I have a trans YouTube channel. And I so you're make a dude. No. <laughs> but I will say that, you know, sometimes I feel that resentment towards the community when I see an entire community silent about 12 year olds being having their breasts cut off or sort of the uglier things. I'm like, why isn't everyone going after me for having these common sense positions? And I have to check myself to not suddenly I would never be transphobic, but have a resentment towards the community mm -hmm. or walk into a conversation like this and feel like y'all are probably going to attack me because I've been in so many rooms where it's frankly, me versus like 10 of y'all and I'm getting fucking beaten down. And it's like, I can take it, but people build resentment and that's society yeah. at whole right now, I think. Because LGBT yeah. acceptance is going down statistically mm -hmm. for the first time in like 20, 30 years. Definitely. And um, and I definitely, I definitely agree to that because I mean, like how I didn't know that there was actually um, instances of 12 year olds having double mastectomies. I guess that's being pushed down for whatever for whatever reason, because I mean, I try to keep abreast with trans issues and um, there is that narrative that that is just a right wing talking point. But I guess that's because these instances aren't being brought to light or aren't being spoken about. I, um, I really appreciate much. that you acknowledge that because that is so much more than most people are willing to do. And yeah. I think what we have to understand is that in this digital age, we are so separated by algorithms. Totally. So I'm clued into probably more of a right wing algorithm, although I try to follow people of all over the the uh, yeah. political spectrum. And so I'm going to see things that you don't and you're going to see things that I don't. You might see uglier stuff about like the trans panic laws that I'm not as clued into. Mm -hmm. And I might see more stuff about like the kids stuff that you might not be clued into. So I think that I just want to commend you for being able to be like, my algorithm basically fucking lied to me and they never showed me this, you know, because mm -hmm. That's part of the reason we're so divided is we're all clued into different algorithms, unfortunately, in 2023. Yeah. Although, can we touch upon the trans joke you made and, like, comedy re uh, regarding trans people? Yes. I think um, there, there is this narrative with cishet people, I guess, where you can joke about everything. But with, com like, well-known shows like Family Guy and It's Always Sunny, where you're clearly supposed to not like that family or that group of people and they're not supposed to be the model of who you are. Most Americans see that humor and take that as humor they're supposed to have or like how they're supposed to be or they watch The Office and see Stephen Carroll or whatever his name is, the, the boss, and they take his racist jokes and they think, okay, I can make these racist jokes because I'm seeing them. So you think and Michael Scott was bad for society? Should ban not, Michael Scott? Not ban, but like people aren't, people are, I don't want to say dumb, but people are viewing, aren't viewing it the same way that the writers may have intended it. 
So if you're making these jokes about a my, uh, marginalized community, think about your audience. you're not. Yeah, you're think you need to think, think about, about your audience. I just don't like, see why. Hear your joke and and hear like. You, okay, I, I can make you out. Yeah. But why I would mean, trans you know. people belong to this like special protected class where they don't get joked about around about like though. anybody else? Like for for me, but I'm saying that's kind, that's kind of almost what you're requesting. Any because, marginalized group, though. Right, but I'm saying like Michael Scott, like these classic bits of him jo uh, clearly not understanding Oscar's Mexicanness. Like to me, those are like some of the funniest things I can imagine from that show. And for me and Danny to be sitting on a podcast that is a self-described comedy adjacent podcast and to be having a conversation about an issue that clearly we don't understand 100%, which is trans people. And maybe along the way we say some things that are consider a little bit out of line by trans people. I mean, is that really shocking? Is this really the hill that trans people are supposed to die on? I just feel like it's kind of, it's Not a lot to ask. On, no, but I, necessarily. Because we would joke about anything else, race, yeah. well, gender, you everything. Check, you can check yourself and see what your audience is thinking because, um, maybe not the office, but it's always sunny. There was a running gag of a trans joke and, People are viewing that as a pr an appropriate way mm -hmm. to respond to a trans. But person. that was funny. Mac was secretly sleeping with a trans funny. woman, and he was he was so self indulgent that he it, he it, just liked the attention. That, that, that was funny. You were very in on that. The, 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 the wider, wider the wider There's a lot of people America who see this shit not. and they're just like, ha ha, trans. But are we like, supposed to polish up all of our comedy and all of our no, discussions to appeal to the lowest common denominator? I mean, well, but there's a polishing that is expected from trans people where we're supposed to respect cis women's spaces. So why can't why can't that be a double? Well, listen, if I was at the trans bar just telling everybody that I'm just making these jokes or some shit, I mean, that's kind of different than me doing a podcast where we pri we spoke about this. I mean, the, the conversation about trans women going into women's spaces, I mean, it's... But you're also kind of creating annoying. an environment where, pe where guys, where your peers or your audience that are attracted to trans women are potentially not going to be open about that i don't or think anybody's get, getting that idea. or they may get with a trans woman and may like abuse them when their family doesn't like it or made like, okay for example whatever your post that you made with, with the clip of me in it right uh. i read the comments a lot of the comments like there were some comments that were like oh i can't believe you didn't beat her ass mm. shit. like you have to understand some of your audience like that's really how they feel. I like, disavow them. That you should have. Well, I'm not telling you to. You disavow. Continue to pander to them. Many of you. However, I'm just letting you know. Like that's that's reality. Like people oh, don't I know. think that way. Yeah, and that's so the, the thing that's lurking around in my head. When you guys are having the conversation about telling somebody that you're trans before you take them home, I'm just thinking about how such a huge percentage of the dudes that I know in my life, if they had that happen to them, would probably be totally open about it on a podcast about the fact that they would attack them like oh, i mean yeah, I, I know and i just i mean that's fucked really? up i guess but i mean that that's a real like i don't know i just can't imagine somebody not revealing that before they went home with them because yeah, i i feel like a lot of dudes would though. react that way you don't assault someone period well because it becomes well, agree, a personal yeah. thing you have to understand Doesn't it's a assault. personal thing it's not necessarily being transphobic on some level it's feeling as if you were deceived right. now i'm not assault, of course not in no way shape or form do i think it's no. okay what i'm trying to say is you have to look at why these things happen and why people get themselves into these spaces and why do men feel this way about trans women? So on the flip side, I have sex with men as a gay man, right? I had to work in that space and it wasn't immediate. Men weren't okay with me because I have a vagina, but I found the space and I always was open about it and men had sex with me and it was never an issue because I was always upfront about it. Now, I think it's a straight thing. I'll be honest with you. I don't For necessarily sure. believe it's a gay thing. So it's a very straight space. Men have their space in the world. They feel very like I can't be gay or, you know what I mean? If I have sex with a trans woman, that's gay. There's a, Do you have no idea how, how important this is to the average heterosexual dude? It yeah. might be disgusting to you, but the reality yeah. is, is it's that, real. yeah, for sure. They hold that to them is a huge part it's of their huge, manhood. That's right. You know? That's right. And I think, I think we as trans people also need to look at the other side. We can't just say everyone needs to be okay with us. We need to look at why people aren't okay with us or why people get mad at a trans woman for not disclosing and they go home. It's a very personal space for the these guys and of course no way should they be attacking a trans woman yeah. right. but we need to understand the psychology assault. around this and why they feel on some level tricked you, you all pass as women you can't but, defend the assault and i never would never but there also is a conversation to be had yes within our own community to be yes. like let's not put ourselves in situations yeah. where this can happen 
Right. Yeah, because but way worse some... problem is that, that there's guys that think it's okay to assault people. That's right, but, well, yeah. but if someone's life is saved by just saying, you yeah. don't put yourself in that situation, then that's the message right. to put out. It doesn't well, make it okay. That does get sent. Like, let's be honest. We, we all tell each other. My trans elders told me, don't pussy stunt. And I but you work in anyway. the sex industry. Uh, that's a different space. Just regular trans women don't necessarily have that. Is, I mean, I don't know. I guess I, you're right. I don't know. I'm, I yeah, but we're, we're in... We're in groups where we're talking to trans women from all walks of life. Yeah. Sure. But I'm saying you as sex workers have a different way of being than just an average trans woman who isn't in sex work and does want to walk the world as a woman and yeah. might not feel the need. You understand it in a different way. I just want to ta- okay, I just want to challenge you guys to something. And, and I really, truly am being so genuine. Sure. I'm not trying to be a bitch. I know mm. I'm a bitch. I don't care. But listen, I'm being honest. I want to challenge y'all. Like, I feel that sometimes people get, pol- like, you, you polarize people a little bit because your attitude, like, you, you, I understand that you're a YouTuber, and I understand that you're an activist, I understand you're opinionated, and it's your job to be opinionated. I think that if, you, but here's the deal, like, I'm assuming that now you're very successful, correct? Like, you're super famous at this point, right? Are you? I, I'm, I'm fine. You have, yeah, I'm you fine. got your fans, you got, you got, you have your audience. She's the Andrew so, Tate so, of the trans so community. You have, you, have, you have your audience, so... <laughs> I, I challenge you to like explore other things other than these things that you know are going to work because I feel like when I you- tell you mm-hmm. I've explored every square centimeter of the trans conversation mm-hmm. and every issue I've looked at up and down and right. for my opinion because that's my job to do it right. I mm-hmm. promise you like I just I'm not think that it would make people but- look I think it would pay- make people look at all of your arguments better if the because people every look at time them quite I, well it's just the trans uh, yeah. community that has an issue well, the general them. public some reaction tra- would be very i, I have was a lot on of trans friends who are good, huge fans good of you. And, like, well thank you yeah. to them and <laughs> here's a good point to make i was on this show i think four years ago i had a fraction of my audience at the time and the reception was very great considering it's an audience that might not be predispositioned to like me mm-hmm. and i remember looking in the comments and being like oh like they all like me they all feel like i'm sensible they all think mm-hmm. i'm like cool and i think that that's that says something about how the general public is looking at things that I and Buck are saying and being like, okay, I fuck with that. And then our community is looking at it and well, being like, actually, your fans are Nazis and you're a Nazi leader. I've had, a, I've think, had conversations with tons leader. of like conservative people. And when Blair's name comes up, there's no like ugh, trans, whatever. It's just very much like they look at her as a reasonable person. And I, I, I think that that right wing bias that we all perceive to be a real thing, it may exist, but I don't really see either of them getting that from the average right wing person right? It. it's like mm-hmm. in a world where all trans people are viewed as these people who are okay with kids being sterilized if the bare minimum is like it's one of us being like actually that's not cool people mm-hmm. respect it and then you yeah. get called a fucking pick me as if yeah. being a pick me isn't the person who's repeating every mantra the community tells them to to get in with the community i don't care about getting in with the community so if that makes me a pick me for the general public i'd rather be picked by like society than this small community that has so much hate in their heart for anyone who's different than them yeah i get it i just think that the reason that you're getting this from other trans women is because they do see it as pick me behavior because there are so many huge issues in our community a community like violence and like drug use and so many things that like trans women are going through like see i don't know how to fix our community being on drugs right but the thing is you all when you when the topics that like for example this whole conversation we've been talking about like kids and bathrooms like when you talk about that stuff it i I don't really talk about bathrooms because that's i don't care about bathrooms oh i'm just saying i I just feel like you could like the reason that trans women receive it this way is because it doesn't feel like a balanced like I, i and once again i'm not that familiar with the content but it feels like I don't know. It just feels like there's so much more to our community, like so many issues in our community to talk about. That's why it's so important that people like us sit here because we don't agree with a lot of stuff that's going on. That doesn't make us not trans. That doesn't make us not care about. I've been doing this work for 30 plus years. I have a huge huge love for the trans community. I only want people to have what I have. That being said, I don't agree with the narrative today. It doesn't mean that I I hate trans people or that I'm against the trans community. It means I have a different way of being. And I want to to live in the world. I don't want people to be angry at me. I want to coexist. 
in the world. I don't want to, because I'm trans, I get special things or I get this. I want to be a part of, I transitioned to live as a man. I did not transition to be trans. I'm not a trans person. I'm a man who happens to be a biological woman. That's the difference with what's going on in this place. My identity isn't trans. My identity is male. I had a sex change. So today people are taking on this identity choice of trans. Go right ahead. That has nothing to do with what I did, what I want to achieve in the world, and what I want people to see me as. So I'm entitled as a transsexual man. And I also call myself a transsexual, I not transgender. Yeah. So that being said, right. So the, as you know, that's also a point of content. That's, that's, Crazy that's Ryan, also right? a really a horrible space to be in. People think that I'm using an outdated word or that I'm using things that aren't part of the community. And I'm like, what? Word to use. So, so that being said, this is what you need to see. We need to have different voices in this community. We do not agree. Not We do not agree on many things going on here. And it's important for the world to see that. Our ultimate goal, all sitting here today, is that we live free and happy. That's really, I believe, our ultimate goal. But if we don't be honest about the fact that you have a different opinion, I have a different opinion, which is okay. It doesn't make us have to hate each other. And that's what I think I'm trying to prove. I love you as my sisters, yeah. as part of the family, oh. but I have a different opinion than you. Today, you can't have a different opinion or you're a Nazi or you're a right wing or you're, you know, they are turf or, a, you know, and I, tr I get called transphobic. Could you imagine? <laughs> I get, I'm an elder in this community and I get called trans. That's when I knew something's, something's wrong. We are, we, have, we are just not solid. We are unhealthy. We are hating on each other. We don't care about each other. We only care as if we're all thinking alike. We don't think alike. We never will. And that's the important part of this message as far as I'm concerned, is that we need to be able to voice our own opinions without us feeling that we're not part of the community. Yeah, I mean, Buck, I'll tell you, I've had people voice their opinions about you to me. One hundred percent. And I have said to them, "That's one of our elders." Thank you. So I appreciate that. You can that. say what you want about it. Say what you want. He's a pioneer, and I'm sitting here today. Am I not? <laughs> and, and, so, and so it I, I admire matter. that. I admire that. Yeah, but thank I you. Think, I guess I just, I, I think when you it, like you. you you can't wonder why you polarize people when. Oh no, I don't wonder when you at disagree all. with them. I don't. About I don't care. I actually I mean, don't care. But what's really because, so bad? Maybe though, that's what it is. Yeah, You're I break it care down to what's either. really that yeah, bad. That's though, right. Like, is thinking that twelve-year-olds shouldn't have double mastectomies that that's bad? That's right. No, no. Is thinking I'm that sixteen-year-olds have their dicks cut off? Your opinions are your opinions. Right. No, but they then just I, don't I like that we're out I just think when that's the highlight of your conversation, it polarizes us as trans women because it's like. I care about kids, though. Yeah, right. Like, I'm I not going to prioritize. I'm not going to prioritize. You're wondering why trans women hate you. I'm trying to tell you. Like, I'm trying to tell no, you. No, the thing is, though, I yeah, fully get it. Right. I just think it's highly irrational. Yeah. Like, right. I think it's irrational to expect me as, you know, trans is secondary in my life. I'm an adult in this world, right. and I'm a taxpayer, and I have a home, and I have a fiance, and I have a life, and I'm like, Buck has kids. It's like, I think any person who prioritizes being pure in trans ideology and just agreeing with everyone over protecting kids, that's irrational behavior. So if that's the reason that it's so fucking bad to be me in this space or to be Buck, it's like, I don't care. Like listening to this, it occurs to me like, well, maybe the trans community needs to like come to a consensus, which is probably completely unrealistic. But you remember a time period where the gay rights movement was united in a, right. enough that they could kick the fucking pedophiles out that's and right. shit like that. Now right? we're bringing it back in again. And now right. we're bringing this weird child thing. Wait, you really think that's happening? Oh, for sure it is. A hundred percent. Well, they created a new anymore, flag. Like so, so okay. back in the day, we had something called NAMBLA, right. which is the right. And they put, they I heard they put out a freaks. documentary. Oh, my. We pushed against And then that. you guys all voted them out, right? We were not okay with that. We, <laughs> Yeah, we voted them out. We kicked them out. We were okay. like, get the hell out of our space. We're not cool with that. Now they're rebranding as maps. They're rebranding as maps. How Back dare they? Back to J.K. Rowling. But, <laughs> um, Are you a Slytherin? Is, uh, is a Slytherin J.K. Player. a closeted trans man? <laughs> I've heard it a lot online. Oh my god, that's ridiculous! <laughs> how, that's since you're close to her, she's not. She's a woman, a married woman, she has, has kids. kids. She's a completely she normal human kids. being. Caitlin had kids. Soon I'll be doing well, an interview with her. So kids. I'll ask her that question when I do the interview with her. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. Everyone thinks you're a trans man. This why is, is, is like, why does anyone give a fuck what J.K. Rowling has to say about trans people anyway? She's like the most famous author in the world. Yeah, but she All writes about... All the blue hairs we, we would do well That's to have why. people that powerful on our where? side. Does that make sense? We would right. do she well to have books. somebody like that the blue who actually said, I, I love trans people. I respect them. She actually said that. She said, I respect trans people. I love that. 
So I, for me, I think it's more important to have somebody like that on our side than pushing against. You're never going to take her out. You're never going to cancel her. She had her best selling ever. year since the original Harry Potter series That's right. last year. That's and that right. was like the height of her cancellation. That's so right. It's not even working. It's right. like not working. Like I heard this argument that, you know, the Democratic Party should care more about stuff like, you know, someone like Joe Rogan, who used to identify as a Democrat. They should have been really concerned That's about right. keeping in, him in there. Right. <laughs> Is this big tent? trans philosophy like where like ideally that you guys could come up with policy ideas and, and like some stuff that there could be consensus is on so at least there would be like a coordinated front and then mm-hmm. it would be harder for something like well, lives a tiktok to present trans people as fucking right. crazy the right the unfortunate right. thing is that you have people like rachel levine in the white house yep who recently was in an interview talking about, I am so thankful I have my children. I'm so thankful I transitioned at an age where I had my children, but also I support 12 year old transitioning. Yeah. So she is pulling the ladder up behind her talking about, I'm yeah. glad I have my kids, but also I don't care if kids sterilize themselves yeah. and be able to have the beautiful life I have with my kids. Yeah. So this is the person in Biden's ear, which who even knows what the fuck Biden's <laughs> thinking? It's like, who knows? But <laughs> Rachel Levine has the most power of any trans yeah. person right now in the United States. So it's like, as much as like people like Buck and I are painted as like the big bad wolf or something and we're such an issue, the most powerful trans person in the country right now is in Biden's ear talking about sterilized 12 year olds. That's right. So the United Front thing, unfortunately, the United Front right now, we're going against the grand. The United Front is kids can transition. And then the also front. there's the fact that as we were saying before, we're living in an algorithmic world um, yeah. where on either side, the loudest people are the most ignorant. Where or the loudest people, the people that get the most platforms are the trans women that don't pass for the most part. Mm-hmm. Or the and the right and left are platforming mostly trans right. women that are or trans people in general that don't pass that are saying unhinged things. That's right. It's happening on either side and yeah, that it makes is. it so that we are that our um, ability to come together is being messed up because there's a bunch of trans people that have logical views, have or are a little bit more middle of the ground on certain things or whatever. And it's not being pushed the top of the algorithm because it's not headline worthy. And I forget who brought up um, blending in earlier, but we have to remember that that's like the goal of most like classical trans people is just like to transition and just live your life Mm -hmm. like that's the goal is like i just want to live my life and have a job and go to school and have a husband and whatever so those people don't necessarily have the incentive and it's a net negative to even talk about this shit it's like i don't want to get involved in this shit i just want to live my life so that's the other problem is like those of us that have platforms don't want to talk like i'll just say this right now i've had almost every major trans influencer like a more mainstream like a like a nikito or a Gigi or whatever at some point in actresses in my DMs talking about, I agree with everything you say, but I could never say it. Right. That's a fucking problem. I'm yeah. sorry. If you don't have the balls to say what you need to say because you don't want to lose your acting gig or whatever, like, that's an issue for me. It's like... Well, then you should be proud of yourself. You speak your mind. That's well, impressive. I am, but it would be well, she's nice... She's publicly disowned, very, right? But it would be yeah. nice to not take all the slings and arrows and have that's everyone right. talking about, this is the fucking runt of the trans community when Nikita's in my DMs talking about, I agree. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, you, it's just not... It's not, it's you, not you, cool. You, you, it, but it's what you signed up for. Um, well, I no, I don't think that. that's true. But it's the You're hypocrisy, right? She's very right? opinionated. She shares her opinion yeah, a lot. But she and anyone not, who does not has everyone, to be ready for a disagreement. It's not everyone's well, bag. I get that. But, you know like, some of the larger stuff, it's like... If we can, like, like again, I'll see certain. Like, does Nikita claim to be an activist? I don't know. Does she'll she... she'll certainly speak up on things that she wants to talk about, and we don't got to make it about Nikita. I'd actually like Nikita, minus yeah, this one thing her. where it's like, girl, you're in my DMs, but okay, don't say it then. But mm-hmm. like, you know, she but talks. Her bag about, isn't the political bag, right? right? But she dips into right. what she wants to, and when I see it a contradictory you? statement. Yeah. Like in my DMs, it's I agree with you on trans right. women in sports, and on her TikTok reels, it's trans women should be in sports. I'm kind of like, oh. and again, it's no shade to Nikita oh. because everyone has to get their bag, and she's not well right now. But oh. she's not. She she went to jail, and she is we're offline right now, hasn't for two months. And I shout out to her. I hope she's okay. Pray, prayers up for Nikita. Mm. No, honestly, I hope she's okay. Yeah, um, prayers up. So it's less about her than she's one. She's a lot of people are like that, and it's kind of like. Just don't lie. That's all. That's all. Don't lie, because then the ones that tell the truth get fucking shitted on. Right. Yeah. Damn. That's all. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, I do well say I admire you both for having bold 
opinions and not and stick it to them. Thank you. I do. And I appreciate Thank y'all you. for being open, yeah. especially you. Like, I feel like it was genuinely, maybe I'm making too big of a deal about it, but kind of a breakthrough moment for you just to be like, I learned new information and I'll adjust accordingly. And yeah. that's so rare. And, totally. you know, even. And I, I used to watch her videos. I mean, I stopped after a while, but for whatever reason. Yeah. But, um, I did used to watch her videos just to get a different opinion because i mean well that makes you better than most because people don't do that most people don't do that yeah i think this was a very very uh rational sane conversation which was really great i just can't (laughs) wait to see a bunch of very irrational (laughs) unsane people react to it and tweet about it and find the best eight seconds possible to clip (laughs) yeah i look forward to it they're gonna clip that one i know what they're gonna clip you're a dude you're a dude you're a dude you're a dude that and they're gonna clip the i hope we gave them a good show they're gonna we did they're yeah. gonna clip the one part where you're like i'm not mad at trans people not disclosing and they're gonna be like look they're trying to trick men so yeah. you know what i mean that, that, that's what they um, do yeah they will so do i'm it. like just i am trying to trick men into they giving will. me their money <laughs> all of their money ghosts yeah. okay i appreciate you guys very very Is much drag queen story time over everyone's <laughs> instagrams <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get to that. We didn't even get to uh, if we should be really, really too. concerned about the drag queens, right? Funny as fuck. Yeah. I can write you yeah. jokes. You can, yeah, that'll be great. Everybody's Instagrams <laughs> are down below. Everybody's probably got YouTube channels or do some kind of Only content. Fans. Only some fans. kind of holy Only fans. fans. Only fans. <laughs> okay. And Twitter. Only Large fans, percentage maybe. of us here are on Twitter, OnlyFans, etc. Only yeah, fans. YouTube. Thank you guys so much. This was very, very Thank revealing yeah, for me, and I, I can't wait to read the comments. So make sure you drop one down below. This was great. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank Thank you. you. Bye.